Hello and welcome to our health series. In today's episode, we delve into an important issue in modern health, metabolic syndrome. It's a term that's been buzzing around health circles for a while now. But what exactly is it? Well, imagine a domino effect, but with your health. A bit dramatic, you say? Well, that's because it is. Metabolic syndrome is not a disease in itself, but a cluster of conditions that, when they occur together, can increase your risk of serious health issues. In this video, we're going to explore what metabolic syndrome is, the causes and risk factors, its implications, and how we can prevent and manage it. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, putting together pieces to get a clear picture. So, without further ado, let's dive into the world of metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome, as the name suggests, is not a single condition but a mix of health issues. It's like a band but instead of making music it's causing trouble in your body. This band consists of four members, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, and abnormal cholesterol levels. Let's meet our first member, high blood pressure. This guy is like a pressure cooker. When the pressure inside your blood vessels gets too high, it strains your heart and arteries, making them work harder than they should. Over time, this can damage your blood vessels, leading to heart disease or even a heart attack. Next up, we have high blood sugar. Picture sugar as tiny, sharp crystals. When there's too much of it in your blood, it can damage your blood vessels and nerves, leading to conditions like diabetes. It's like having a party in your bloodstream, but this party is way too loud, and the neighbors, your organs, aren't happy about it. Moving on to our third member, excess body fat around the waist. This one's pretty straightforward. The more fat you have around your waist, the higher your risk of heart disease and other health problems. It's like carrying around a spare tire but this one doesn't help when you have a flat, it just weighs you down. Finally we have abnormal cholesterol levels. Cholesterol is a waxy substance found in your blood. It's not all bad, in fact your body needs it to build cells. But when your bad cholesterol levels are high, and good cholesterol levels are low, it can lead to a buildup of plaque in your arteries. Imagine it like a traffic jam in your bloodstream where everything gets stuck causing problems for the rest of the body. Now picture all these conditions performing together. It's not a symphony, but rather a cacophony of health problems. This, my friends, is metabolic syndrome. When these conditions team up, they significantly increase your risk of serious health problems like heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. As you can see, this combination can significantly elevate your risk for heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. So let's ensure we do our best to keep this band from playing their damaging tune in our bodies. Now that we know what metabolic syndrome is, let's look at what causes it. The exact cause of metabolic syndrome is a complex web of interrelated factors, each playing its own unique role in the development of this condition. Let's start with an inactive lifestyle. Picture this, you're sitting on your couch, remote in hand, binging the latest season of your favorite show. Sounds like a great Friday night, right? But when this becomes your everyday routine, it's not so great for your body. Lack of physical activity can lead to weight gain, higher blood pressure and increased blood sugar levels, all of which contribute to metabolic syndrome. Next, let's talk about food. We all love a good burger or pizza, but a consistently poor diet high in fats and sugars can wreak havoc on your body. Over time it can lead to obesity and high cholesterol levels, two other key factors in metabolic syndrome. Speaking of obesity, it's not just about the number on the scale or the size of your genes. It's about where the excess fat is located on your body. Specifically, excess body fat around the waist is a major risk factor for metabolic syndrome. Think of it as a ticking time bomb, silently increasing your risk for serious health conditions. Lastly, we can't ignore the role of genetics. Sometimes, despite our best efforts, our genes can predispose us to certain conditions, including metabolic syndrome. If your family has a history of type 2 diabetes or heart disease, you may be at a higher risk. So we've talked about an inactive lifestyle, poor diet, obesity, and genetic factors. It's a lot to take in, but don't let it overwhelm you. Knowledge is power, and understanding these factors can give you the power to make changes. Small changes in your lifestyle can lead to big improvements in your health. Understanding these factors can be the first step in preventing and managing metabolic syndrome. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So, take that step today your body will thank you. Unfortunately, if left unchecked, metabolic syndrome can lead to serious health issues. Now you might be wondering, what kind of issues are we talking about here? Well, let's dive in. Metabolic syndrome isn't just a standalone condition, it's a sneaky little ringleader often leading the charge towards other more serious health problems. Picture it as a catalyst, 
fast-tracking the onset of chronic diseases that can significantly impact your quality of life. One of the primary health risks associated with metabolic syndrome is type 2 diabetes. This is a condition where your body either resists the effects of insulin, a hormone that regulates the movement of sugar into your cells, or it simply doesn't produce enough insulin to maintain normal glucose levels. And let me tell you, having your blood sugar levels out of whack is no picnic. But the implications of metabolic syndrome don't stop there. It's like that uninvited party guest who not only crashes your party, but also invites their friends. In this case, the uninvited guests are heart disease and stroke. The presence of metabolic syndrome can increase the risk of developing heart disease, leading to potential heart attacks or strokes. And if that wasn't enough, metabolic syndrome can also lead to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, a condition where fat builds up in the liver, damaging this vital organ over time. It's like a domino effect with one condition leading to another and another and so on. Here's the kicker. All these chronic conditions I just mentioned, they're among the leading causes of death worldwide. Grim, I know. But remember, knowledge is power, and being aware of these risks is the first step towards prevention. So, while metabolic syndrome might sound like a mouthful, it's more than just a fancy term, it's a serious health condition with far-reaching implications. And if we ignore it, it's like ignoring that check engine light on your car's dashboard. Sure the car might still run but for how long and at what cost? This makes understanding metabolic syndrome all the more crucial. While the risks are significant, there are ways to prevent and manage metabolic syndrome. It's like handling a complex puzzle, every piece matters, and they all come together to create a clearer picture of health. Regular physical activity is akin to the corner pieces of our puzzle. It's a foundation that helps to stabilize everything else. It's not about running marathons or lifting heavy weights. Instead, it's about consistency. Even a brisk walk for half an hour every day can make a world of difference. Think of it as your daily dose of anti-metabolic syndrome potion. Next, we have a balanced diet, the border pieces of our puzzle. Consuming a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, and healthy fats can help manage weight and keep blood sugar, blood pressure, and cholesterol levels in check. And no, you don't have to bid farewell to your favorite foods. It's about striking a balance and making healthier choices more often. Consider it as your edible armor against metabolic syndrome. Maintaining a healthy weight is akin to the middle pieces of our puzzle. Filling in the gaps and completing the picture. Excess weight, especially around the waist, is a significant risk factor for metabolic syndrome, so keeping your weight in check is crucial. A few pounds lost can equate to massive gains in health. However, it's also important to acknowledge that for some people, lifestyle changes may not be enough. In such cases, medication might be necessary to control individual risk factors, like high blood pressure or high cholesterol. It's like adding a bit of glue to secure a stubborn puzzle piece. Remember, small, consistent changes can yield big results. It's not about perfection, but progression. Each step you take towards a healthier lifestyle is a step away from metabolic syndrome. And each piece you add to your puzzle brings you closer to the complete picture of health. So take that step today, because your health is worth every effort. As we come to the end of our exploration of metabolic syndrome, it's important to remember that knowledge is power. This modern health challenge, often flying under the radar, is a combination of conditions including high blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, and abnormal cholesterol levels. Together, they pose significant health risks, leading to heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. The causes are multifaceted, involving inactive lifestyles, poor diets, obesity, and genetic factors. But don't despair, it's not all doom and gloom. With understanding comes prevention and management, which can be as simple as regular physical activity, a balanced diet, and maintaining a healthy weight. So, if any of these risk factors ring a bell, it's time to reach out to your healthcare provider. It's your health after all and you're the one in the driver's seat. Early detection and lifestyle changes can make all the difference. Thank you for watching and remember stay healthy and informed. Welcome to our enlightening video series, Obesity, The Silent Invader. Today, we delve into the vital topic of weight management as a crucial aspect of overall health and well-being. In our fast-paced, ever-evolving lives, understanding and managing obesity is key to maintaining a healthy lifestyle. This video explores the science behind obesity, its impact on health, and effective strategies for managing and preventing it. If you're seeking to navigate your health journey with confidence and knowledge, this video is for you. Don't forget to like, 
subscribe, leave a comment, and hit the notification bell for more insightful content on making informed choices about your health and well-being. Let's embark on this journey of understanding and managing obesity together. Always consult a healthcare professional before making any major lifestyle changes. Did you know that over 650 million adults worldwide are living with obesity? That's about 13% of the global adult population. Astonishing, isn't it? But what's even more surprising is that these numbers are on the rise. In the last four decades, obesity rates have nearly tripled. And it's not just a problem in high-income countries. Low- and middle-income nations are also seeing a surge in obesity rates. This is not just a public health concern, it's a global epidemic. Obesity, a term that often gets tossed around casually, is a serious health issue that is frequently underestimated. It's not just about carrying a few extra pounds. It's about having an excess amount of body fat that can significantly impact health. In a world obsessed with appearances, discussions around obesity often get clouded by aesthetic concerns. However, this is far from just an issue of appearance. Obesity is a silent, sneaky disease that can rob individuals of their health, happiness, and in severe cases, even their lives. We often see it creep up slowly, almost unnoticed. It begins with an extra serving of dessert here, a skipped workout there, a preference for elevator rides over stairs. Gradually, these seemingly harmless choices begin to add up, and before we know it, we're dealing with a health concern that's much bigger than we imagined. It's time we start acknowledging obesity for what it truly is, a significant health crisis. It's not just about the individual, it's about the collective health of our communities, our nations, and our world. The first step in addressing any issue is understanding it, and that's exactly what we aim to do here. We want to shed light on obesity, its causes, its complications, and most importantly, how we can prevent and manage it. So, let's dive in and unravel this complex health issue. Let's understand why it's more than just a number on the scale. Let's explore how it silently affects millions of lives each day. Obesity is more than just an issue of appearance, it's a silent and deadly health crisis. So, what exactly is obesity? It's more than just being overweight. Let's start by defining obesity. It's not merely about carrying a few extra pounds. Obesity is a medical condition characterized by an excess of body fat. This excess fat can interfere with basic physical functions such as breathing and walking, and can even influence mental health. But how do we measure obesity? Enter the Body Mass Index, or BMI. The BMI is a simple tool that uses height and weight to give an approximation of body fat. For adults, a BMI of 25 to 29.9 is considered overweight. However, a BMI of 30 or more is categorized as obese. Now it's important to note that BMI isn't a perfect measure. It doesn't directly measure body fat, and it doesn't account for muscle mass. An athlete, for instance, may have a high BMI due to increased muscle, but this doesn't mean they're obese. So if BMI isn't perfect, why use it? Well, despite its limitations, BMI provides a good starting point. It's a simple, quick, and inexpensive way to identify potential weight problems in large populations. More precise measures like body fat percentage can be used for a more accurate diagnosis, but these methods are often more complex and costly. Now let's differentiate between being overweight and being obese. While both terms mean that a person's weight is greater than what's considered healthy, obesity is generally associated with a much higher amount of body fat. Being overweight could be a result of extra muscle, bone, or water, as well as having too much fat. Obesity, on the other hand, is a chronic condition defined by an excessive amount of body fat. This excess fat can lead to health problems such as heart disease, diabetes, and even certain types of cancer. So, why is understanding obesity important? Because it's not just about aesthetics or fitting into a certain size, it's about health, longevity, and quality of life. Understanding obesity is the first step towards tackling it. Ever wondered why obesity is so prevalent today? Let's delve into the primary causes. At the top of the list is a poor diet. Consuming excessive amounts of high-calorie, low-nutrient foods such as fast food, sugary drinks, and processed snacks can lead to weight gain. Next is a lack of physical activity. Our modern lifestyle often involves sitting at a desk for hours, which burns fewer calories compared to a more active lifestyle. Now let's not forget genetics. Some people are genetically predisposed to gaining weight more easily than others. It's not an excuse, but a factor that needs to be taken into account. Lastly, we have environmental factors. The world we live in doesn't exactly promote a healthy lifestyle. Fast food outlets on every corner, sedentary entertainment options, and urban designs that discourage physical activity all contribute to the obesity epidemic. 
There are also secondary causes like certain medical conditions, medications and psychological factors. Recognizing these causes is critical in both preventing and managing obesity. Obesity doesn't just affect how you look, it impacts your overall health. Let's delve into the complications associated with obesity. First, we have heart disease. The excess fat in your body can increase your blood pressure and cholesterol levels, which can lead to blockages in your arteries. This puts more strain on your heart, raising the risk of heart disease. Next, we have type 2 diabetes. Obesity can lead to insulin resistance, a condition where your body doesn't use insulin properly. This can cause glucose to build up in your blood rather than being used as energy, leading to diabetes. Stroke is another major complication. Obesity can lead to higher levels of bad cholesterol and lower levels of good cholesterol. This imbalance can result in plaque buildup in the arteries that supply blood to the brain, which can trigger a stroke. Arthritis, specifically osteoarthritis, is also more common in people with obesity. The excess weight places an additional strain on joints and cartilage, causing them to wear away faster. Sleep apnea, a condition where breathing repeatedly stops and starts during sleep, is also linked to obesity. Excess fat around the neck can narrow the airway causing temporary pauses in breathing. Lastly, obesity increases the risk of certain types of cancer, including breast, colon, and kidney cancer. The excess fat cells may release hormones that affect cell growth, leading to cancer. Consider the case of John, a 50-year-old man who had been living with obesity for over two decades. John had to face multiple health issues like heart disease, diabetes, and sleep apnea. His quality of life was severely affected, he struggled with daily tasks, had difficulty moving around and his constant health concerns took a toll on his mental well-being. So you see obesity can significantly impact your overall health and quality of life. It's not just about the numbers on the scale but about how those numbers affect every aspect of your life. The complications from obesity can be severe but they're not inevitable. With the right changes and the right attitude, we can turn the tide on obesity. Let's delve into that in the next scene. Prevention is indeed better than cure, especially when it comes to obesity. When we talk about the prevention and management of obesity, lifestyle changes take the center stage. A balanced diet, regular exercise, and healthy habits are the trifecta of maintaining a healthy weight. This doesn't mean you need to become a marathon runner or a salad enthusiast overnight. Small, consistent changes can make a big difference. Let's delve into the concept of a balanced diet. It doesn't mean you have to give up all your favorite foods. It's about including a variety of food items from all food groups in the right proportions. It's about enjoying your food, but being mindful of portion sizes. Next up, we have regular exercise. Now, this might sound daunting, but it doesn't have to be. Whether it's a brisk walk in the park, a dance class, or even gardening, the idea is to get moving. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity activity on most days of the week. Healthy habits are the third pillar. This includes everything from getting enough sleep, reducing stress, to avoiding harmful habits like smoking and excessive alcohol consumption. Remember our bodies are like machines and they need proper care and maintenance to function optimally. However, it's important to note that each individual is unique, hence, the importance of medical guidance and personalized plans. A healthcare professional can provide you with a plan tailored to your specific needs and circumstances. They can help you set realistic goals and monitor your progress. Lastly, let's not forget the role of community and family support. It's easier to stick to healthy habits when you have a support system cheering you on. Whether it's a workout buddy, a family member who cooks healthy meals, or an online community for motivation, every bit of support counts. In summary, prevention and management of obesity are all about lifestyle changes. It's about making conscious choices every day and taking one step at a time towards a healthier lifestyle. Every step towards a healthier lifestyle helps in the fight against obesity. But it's not just about individual actions, we need societal and environmental changes too. To combat the obesity epidemic, we need to look beyond personal responsibility and take a broader perspective. It's about creating an environment that supports healthy choices. This includes everything from city planning that encourages walking to policies that make healthy foods more accessible and affordable. Let's take a moment to appreciate some of the successful initiatives out there. Schools introducing healthier lunch options, cities creating more pedestrian-friendly streets, governments implementing sugar taxes to discourage consumption of sugary drinks, businesses offering gym memberships as part of employee benefits. These are all steps in the right direction, but there's still more to be done. We need to keep pushing for policies that prioritize health. More importantly, 
we need to foster a culture that values wellness over convenience. Together, we can turn the tide against obesity. Because remember, every ripple of change begins with a single drop. Let's be those drops and create a wave of positive transformation. This video is for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice. We strongly recommend consulting a healthcare professional for personalized advice and before making any significant changes to your lifestyle or health regimen. Stay informed, stay healthy, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and hit the notification bell for more insightful content on making informed choices about your reproductive health. Let's embark on this journey of empowerment together. Always see consult a healthcare professional before making any major lifestyle changes. Your health matters to us. Dive into the world of health with us today as we discuss a silent but serious condition, type 2 diabetes. This is a health concern that affects millions globally, yet it remains overlooked and often misunderstood. When we speak of type 2 diabetes, we're referring to a chronic condition that influences the way your body metabolizes sugar, an important source of fuel. It's a condition that develops when your body either resists the effects of insulin, a hormone that regulates the movement of sugar into your cells, or doesn't produce enough insulin to maintain a normal glucose level. It's a silent threat, often showing no symptoms until the condition has progressed significantly. But understanding this condition is the first step in preventing it and managing it effectively. So, let's dive in, let's learn, and let's unravel this medical mystery together. Type 2 Diabetes You've probably heard of it, but do you know what it really is? It's a condition where your body either resists the effects of insulin, a hormone that regulates the movement of sugar into your cells, or doesn't produce enough insulin to maintain a normal glucose level. Let's break it down a little. Picture your body as a bustling city, and glucose or sugar, as the energy that fuels it. This energy comes from the food we eat. Now, insulin is like the transport system that carries this energy to where it's needed. But in type 2 diabetes there's a hitch in the system. Your body either becomes resistant to insulin, essentially ignoring the transport system, or it doesn't produce enough insulin to carry all the energy around. This causes the glucose to build up in your blood, leading to high blood sugar levels. So, why is this a problem? Well, imagine a city where the energy isn't getting to where it needs to go. Services would start to break down, right? That's what happens in your body. Over time, high blood sugar levels can damage your heart, nerves, kidneys, and even your eyes. But here's the kicker. Many people with type 2 diabetes don't even know they have it. This is because the symptoms can be subtle and easily overlooked. That's why it's often referred to as the silent killer. So it's not just about understanding what type 2 diabetes is, but also recognizing its impact. It's a serious health condition that affects millions of people worldwide. But the good news is, it's largely preventable. And even if you have it, it's manageable. Now that we know what it is, let's find out what causes it. Causes. Many factors contribute to type 2 diabetes, some within our control, others not. The first and foremost of these is genetics. If one or both of your parents have type 2 diabetes, your risk of developing the condition increases. This, unfortunately, is something we can't change. But don't let that get you down. There's a lot we can control. Unhealthy lifestyle choices are a major player in the onset of type 2 diabetes. Regular consumption of high-sugar, high-fat foods can lead to obesity, which is a significant risk factor. The lack of physical activity is another culprit. Our bodies need movement to use the glucose in our blood, and without it, we're left with an excess. Stress, believe it or not, also plays a role. Chronic stress can spike your blood sugar levels, putting you at risk. Similarly, poor sleep habits can disrupt your body's insulin use, leading to higher glucose levels. Finally, age and certain health conditions can increase the risk. Once you hit 45, your chances of developing type 2 diabetes rise. Conditions like high blood pressure and high cholesterol can also contribute to the onset of this condition. So there you have it, the major causes of type 2 diabetes. It's a mix of things we can't change, like our genes, and things we can, like our lifestyle choices. But how would you know if you have it? Let's look at some symptoms. Early detection can make a world of difference. Here are some symptoms to watch out for. Type 2. Diabetes can be stealthy, creeping up on you with symptoms so subtle they're easy to dismiss. However, recognizing these early signs can be pivotal for effective management and prevention of complications. One of the first symptoms people notice is increased thirst. You might find yourself reaching for water more often than usual. 
This is your body's way of trying to dilute the excess sugar in your blood. Next, you may experience frequent urination, often a side effect of the increased thirst. This happens because your body works over time to get rid of the extra sugar, causing you to urinate more often. Another symptom is an increased sense of hunger, even shortly after meals. This occurs because without enough insulin, your cells can't absorb sugar, making you feel hungry. You may also feel more tired than usual. It's not just the everyday fatigue but a kind of tiredness that doesn't get better with rest. This happens because your cells aren't getting the glucose they need for energy. And finally, blurred vision can be an early warning sign. High blood sugar levels can affect your eyes causing blurry vision. Ignoring these symptoms can lead to serious complications. Let's discuss what they might be. Ignoring type 2 diabetes is like playing with fire. Here's why. When we turn a blind eye to this condition, the body's inability to regulate blood sugar can cause a domino effect of complications. The first stop on this undesirable journey is often the heart. High blood sugar levels can lead to the buildup of fatty deposits in blood vessel walls. Over time this can restrict blood flow and lead to heart disease, increasing the risk of a heart attack or stroke. Next we visit the kidneys, vital organs that filter waste from your blood. Diabetes can damage this intricate system, leading to kidney disease or even kidney failure. This could mean dialysis or a kidney transplant. Our nervous system isn't immune to the impacts of ignored diabetes either. High blood sugar can cause diabetic neuropathy, a type of nerve damage that can lead to tingling, pain, or loss of feeling in your feet and hands. In severe cases, amputation may be necessary. The eyes also bear the brunt of uncontrolled diabetes. Conditions such as diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, and cataracts are more common in people with diabetes. In the worst-case scenario, these can lead to blindness. Lastly, let's not forget the mental impact. Living with these physical complications can lead to anxiety and depression, further complicating the management of the disease. These complications paint a grim picture, don't they? But it's not all doom and gloom. The good news is that these complications aren't inevitable. They're the result of uncontrolled, ignored diabetes. With early detection, proper management, and lifestyle changes, you can significantly lower the risk of these complications. So, let's not ignore this silent threat. Let's face it head-on. Because with knowledge comes power, and with power comes the ability to change our health destiny. Sounds scary, right? But there's hope, prevention is possible. The power of prevention is in your hands. Here's how you can reduce your risk. The first line of defense against type 2 diabetes is a healthy diet. This doesn't mean you need to eliminate all your favorite foods but, rather balance them with nutrient-rich options. Incorporate plenty of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains into your meals. Regular physical activity is equally important. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate-intensity exercise, like brisk walking, most days of the week. And don't underestimate the importance of regular health checkups. These can help identify any early signs of type 2 diabetes and allow for timely intervention. Taking these steps isn't just about preventing diabetes, it's about improving your overall health. And if you're already diagnosed, don't lose hope, it's manageable. With the right lifestyle changes and medical treatment, you can lead a normal healthy life. Remember, your health is in your hands. A type 2 diabetes diagnosis isn't the end of the world. Here's how to manage it. When you're diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, it may feel overwhelming. But remember, it's not an insurmountable challenge. Armed with knowledge and the right tools, you can manage this condition and live a healthy, fulfilling life. Managing type 2 diabetes primarily involves maintaining a balanced diet, engaging in regular physical activity, and taking prescribed medication. A well-rounded diet, rich in lean proteins, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, can help control blood sugar levels. Regular physical activity not only helps manage weight but also increases insulin sensitivity, making it a vital part of diabetes management. Additionally, medication may be necessary to help your body maintain normal glucose levels. Remember, these medications work best when complemented with a healthy lifestyle. Also, regular health checkups are crucial. Monitoring your blood sugar levels and staying in touch with your healthcare provider helps in adapting your management plan as needed. Remember, you have the power to live a healthy life, even with type 2 diabetes. Knowledge is power. Use it to protect yourself and your loved ones. Don't let type 2 diabetes sneak up on you. With awareness, prevention, and management, it's a battle we can win together. Stay informed, stay healthy, and join us in the fight against type 2 diabetes.
Hello and welcome to the Victory Education Lounge, your go-to resource for comprehensive, clear, and concise information on a range of complex topics. Today, we're diving into the intricate world of Alzheimer's disease, a progressive neurological disorder that happens to be the most common cause of dementia. We'll be exploring what Alzheimer's is, its causes and risk factors, and its mechanism of action. We'll also delve into how to manage this disease, its complications, and an intriguing potential link to metabolic disorders, particularly type 3 diabetes. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more such informative videos. Stay healthy, stay informed. Also sharing it with your friends, family, or anyone who might benefit from it can make a big difference. The world of Alzheimer's disease is like a vast labyrinth filled with unknowns and complexities that researchers worldwide are striving to unravel. So, buckle up as we delve into the complex world of Alzheimer's disease. Together, we'll navigate this labyrinth, shedding light on its dark corners, and hopefully, emerging with a better understanding of this formidable adversary. Alzheimer's disease is a progressive neurological disorder that significantly impacts cognitive functions. Unraveling the mystery of Alzheimer's is like peeling back the layers of an intricate puzzle. As we delve into this complex condition, let's start by understanding what Alzheimer's disease actually is. Imagine a network. This network is not of computers or phones, but rather, it's a network of neurons or nerve cells in your brain. Alzheimer's disease is a condition where this network gradually breaks down. It's like losing connection, one neuron at a time, leading to cognitive decline over a period of time. This condition is the most common cause of dementia, a term that describes a group of symptoms affecting memory, thinking, and social abilities. Now, dementia isn't a specific disease, but it's a broad term encompassing various conditions, Alzheimer's being the most prevalent one. As we delve deeper into the symptoms of Alzheimer's, we find a pattern, a progression that is as heartbreaking as it is scientifically intriguing. The earliest signs often include difficulty remembering recent events or conversations, as the disease advances, symptoms become more severe. The person may develop language problems, disorientation, mood swings, loss of motivation, and behavioral issues. With time, the person might forget about recent experiences or events, forget the names or identities of family members, and have difficulty with language. The person may also develop changes in personality and behavior such as increased agitation, lack of restraint, or wandering and getting lost. But remember, Alzheimer's is more than just memory loss. It's a journey of cognitive decline that can last from a few years to a decade or more, varying from person to person. The symptoms are progressive, starting with mild memory loss and escalating to severe cognitive impairment. Alzheimer's disease is a relentless adversary, one that we are still striving to fully understand and hopefully defeat one day. But as we journey through this complex maze, it's essential to remember that every person's experience with Alzheimer's is unique, and so is their strength and resilience in face of this challenge. The exact cause of Alzheimer's remains a mystery, but there are several known risk factors. Genetics plays a significant role in the development of Alzheimer's. For instance, variations in the APOE gene are linked to a higher risk of the disease. However, inheriting this gene does not mean one is destined to develop Alzheimer's, it merely increases the likelihood. In addition to genetics, Lifestyle and environmental factors also contribute to the risk of Alzheimer's. Aging is the most significant risk factor. The older you are, the greater your risk. However, Alzheimer's is not a normal part of aging, and not everyone who grows old develops the disease. Family history is another key factor. Those with a parent or sibling with Alzheimer's are more likely to develop the disease themselves. The risk increases if more than one family member has the illness. Certain head injuries and some cardiovascular health factors are also associated with a higher risk of Alzheimer's. For instance, conditions that damage the heart or blood vessels, such as high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, diabetes or high cholesterol, can increase the risk of Alzheimer's. Lifestyle factors such as a lack of physical activity, a poor diet, social isolation, and limited mental stimulation are also believed to contribute to the risk of developing Alzheimer's. Conversely, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, regular physical activity, a balanced diet, social engagement, and mental stimulation may help lower the risk. It's important to note that having one or more of these risk factors does not mean that a person will definitely develop Alzheimer's. They merely increase the likelihood. Many people with several risk factors never develop the disease, while others with no known risk factors do. 
As our understanding of Alzheimer's grows, we may uncover more risk factors, and our grasp of the complex interplay between genetics, lifestyle, and environment will likely become clearer. While these risk factors increase the likelihood of developing Alzheimer's, they do not guarantee its onset. At the heart of Alzheimer's lies the accumulation of amyloid plaques and tau tangles in the brain. But what does this mean and how does it lead to the symptoms we associate with Alzheimer's disease? Let's begin with amyloid plaques. These are sticky clusters of protein fragments that build up between the nerve cells. Think of them as roadblocks in the brain's highways, disrupting the smooth flow of communication between neurons. Next, we have tau tangles. These are twisted fibers of another protein that accumulate inside the brain's cells. Imagine them as knots in a thread, preventing essential nutrients and other critical supplies from moving along the cell's transport system. Now, these plaques and tangles don't just appear overnight, they gradually build up over time, and as they do, they trigger a series of destructive processes. They block communication between nerve cells, hinder nutrient transport, and eventually lead to the death of these cells. This cell death happens in a slow, progressive manner, starting in areas of the brain responsible for memory before spreading to other regions. When enough cells die in a particular region of the brain, the functions that region controls are compromised. This is why memory loss is often the first noticeable symptom of Alzheimer's, followed by difficulties with language, problem solving, and other cognitive functions. But the story doesn't end here. Current research is exploring other potential mechanisms that could contribute to the onset and progression of Alzheimer's. For instance, some studies suggest that inflammation and oxidative stress might also play a role in the disease. Additionally, the brain's inability to use glucose efficiently, something that occurs in diabetes, is also being investigated as a possible factor. In essence, Alzheimer's disease is a complex and multifaceted condition. Its mechanism of action involves the interplay of several factors, each contributing to the gradual decline in cognitive function that characterizes the disease. Understanding these mechanisms is crucial to developing effective treatments and hopefully, a cure. These destructive processes lead to the characteristic symptoms of Alzheimer's. While there is currently no cure for Alzheimer's, various strategies exist to help manage its symptoms. The treatment of Alzheimer's disease is often as complex as the condition itself. The primary focus is on symptom management and improving quality of life for those affected. This is accomplished through a combination of medications, lifestyle changes, and supportive care. Medications used in Alzheimer's treatment primarily target the brain's chemistry. Cholinesterase inhibitors, for example, work by boosting levels of a chemical messenger involved in memory and judgment. Memantine, another common medication, helps slow the progression of symptoms by regulating the activity of glutamate, a different chemical messenger involved in brain functions. However, medication is just one aspect of Alzheimer's management. Lifestyle modifications also play an integral role. Regular physical activity, a balanced diet, and mental stimulation can all help slow cognitive decline. There's growing evidence that activities such as reading, playing board games, and even gardening can provide mental stimulation and help maintain cognitive function. Social engagement is another crucial aspect of managing Alzheimer's. Social isolation can exacerbate symptoms of dementia, so maintaining relationships and regular social interactions are key. Support groups can also be beneficial, providing a sense of community and understanding that can be immensely comforting to patients and caregivers alike. Supportive care, including occupational and physical therapy, can help patients maintain independence for as long as possible. Occupational therapists can suggest modifications to the home and daily routines to accommodate the patient's changing abilities. Physical therapists, on the other hand, can design exercise programs that improve strength and mobility, reducing the risk of falls and other injuries. In addition to these strategies, ongoing research is exploring new ways to treat and perhaps even prevent Alzheimer's. From innovative drug therapies to non-drug approaches like deep brain stimulation, the future holds promise for more effective Alzheimer's treatments. Though we can't yet stop Alzheimer's, we can take steps to alleviate its impact. With the right approach and a supportive team, it's possible to maintain a high quality of life while navigating the challenges of this complex disease. As Alzheimer's progresses, it brings with it a host of complications. These complications go beyond the commonly known cognitive impairments and can significantly affect an individual's day-to-day -day life, as well as their overall health. One of the most prevalent physical complications is difficulty with mobility. As Alzheimer's disease advances, it can disrupt the brain's communication with the muscles, leading to issues with balance, 
coordination, and overall motor function. This can make tasks like walking or even sitting up increasingly challenging and can greatly increase the risk of falls and related injuries. Another physical complication involves swallowing. Advanced Alzheimer's can affect the muscles and reflexes needed to swallow, a condition known as dysphagia. This can lead to choking, aspiration, or malnutrition, and may necessitate changes in diet or feeding assistance. In addition to these physical complications, Alzheimer's disease can increase susceptibility to infections, particularly pneumonia. This heightened vulnerability is due in part to difficulties with swallowing, but also to a weakened immune system response. But Alzheimer's doesn't just impact the physical. The emotional toll of this disease can be equally, if not more, challenging. People with Alzheimer's may experience feelings of frustration, confusion, anxiety, and depression. They can become withdrawn, lose interest in activities they once enjoyed, and have difficulty coping with their changing abilities. The emotional impact extends to caregivers as well. Providing care for a loved one with Alzheimer's can be incredibly stressful and emotionally draining. Caregivers often report feelings of sadness, anger, guilt, and exhaustion. It's important for caregivers to seek support through therapy, support groups, or respite care. It's crucial to understand that Alzheimer's affects more than just memory. It impacts overall quality of life. Recognizing these complications can help us better support those living with Alzheimer's and highlights the urgent need for continued research and improved treatments. Recent research suggests a potential link between Alzheimer's and metabolic disorders, particularly insulin resistance in the brain. This has led some scientists to propose a new term, type 3 diabetes. You might be wondering, what on earth is type 3 diabetes? Well, it's a concept that's still being explored, but essentially it's a term used to describe a form of Alzheimer's that appears to be driven by insulin resistance in the brain. Insulin, as you may know, is a hormone that helps regulate blood sugar levels. It's crucial for our body's energy metabolism, but insulin also plays a key role in our brains, where it helps with neuron signaling and memory formation. When insulin resistance occurs, it means that cells aren't responding to insulin as they should. In the context of Alzheimer's, the theory is that insulin resistance in the brain leads to a decrease in energy metabolism, ultimately resulting in the death of brain cells and the onset of Alzheimer's symptoms. This form of the disease is what's being referred to as type 3 diabetes. So, what does this mean for Alzheimer's treatment? If Alzheimer's is indeed a metabolic disease, then it might be possible to prevent or treat it using strategies designed to improve insulin sensitivity. For instance, lifestyle changes like a healthy diet and regular exercise, which are known to improve insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes, might also be effective for preventing or managing type 3 diabetes. Of course, it's important to note that this is still a relatively new area of research. Not all scientists agree on the validity of the type 3 diabetes concept, and more research is needed to fully understand the link between insulin resistance and Alzheimer's. But one thing is clear. This groundbreaking research could open new avenues for Alzheimer's prevention and treatment. Despite the challenges, the future holds promise for Alzheimer's research. The scientific community is tirelessly working to unravel the mysteries of this disease. Currently, researchers are studying a variety of new approaches, including immunotherapy, neuroprotective drugs, and the role of inflammation in Alzheimer's. In the realm of prevention, lifestyle modifications such as regular physical activity, a healthy diet, and mental stimulation are gaining more attention. There is also a growing interest in the potential of early detection methods like blood tests to predict Alzheimer's before symptoms appear. In terms of treatment, the focus is shifting towards developing drugs that target Alzheimer's at its roots, aiming to stop or slow the progression of the disease rather than just managing symptoms. These strategies hold the potential to transform the landscape of Alzheimer's treatment in the future. With continued research and funding, we may one day overcome Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's disease is a complex and challenging illness, but understanding it is the first step towards managing it. We've delved into the depths of this progressive neurological disorder, exploring the unknown causes, risk factors, and the intricate mechanisms at play. We've understood that it's not just about memory loss, but also about the devastating complications that can impact daily life. In our journey, we've discovered the current strategies for managing Alzheimer's, acknowledging the importance of medications, lifestyle changes, and social engagement. We've also ventured into the realm of metabolic disorders, shedding light on the intriguing concept of type 3 diabetes and its potential link to Alzheimer's. Remember, while these insights provide a general understanding, 
personal medical advice should always come from healthcare professionals. They can offer tailored strategies based on individual circumstances. Thank you for joining us in the Victory Education Lounge. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Together, we can raise awareness and support for Alzheimer's research. Greetings, smart minds of the Victory Education Lounge. Today we're going to dive into a prevalent health issue that doesn't get as much attention as it should, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD for short. Now you might be wondering, what's the big deal about NAFLD? Well, let me tell you, the liver is one of the most vital organs in our body, playing a significant role in digesting food, storing energy, and even removing toxins. So, when the liver isn't healthy, it can affect our overall health in ways we may not even realize, and that's where NAFLD comes in. This condition, often linked to obesity and other metabolic disorders, is becoming increasingly common worldwide. But don't worry, we're not here to scare you, but to inform and empower you. So buckle up as we explore the world of NAFLD and understand why it's a health concern we should all be aware of. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more such informative videos. Stay healthy, stay informed. Your engagement helps us reach more people and spread awareness about these significant health issues. You may wonder, what exactly is NAFLD? Good question. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD for short, is a condition where excess fat is stored in the liver. This happens in individuals who consume little or no alcohol, hence the term non-alcoholic. Now don't confuse this with alcoholic liver disease which is caused by excessive consumption of alcohol. Both conditions may lead to serious liver damage but their causes are distinctly different. NAFLD is one of the most common causes of chronic liver disease worldwide. It's estimated to affect approximately 1 in 4 people globally. That's right, 1 in 4. It's as prevalent as it is silent, often showing no symptoms until it has progressed significantly. But why should we care about NAFLD? Why is it important to understand? Well, the liver is one of the most vital organs in our body. It performs hundreds of essential functions including cleansing the blood, metabolizing nutrients, and producing proteins necessary for blood clotting. When the liver is laden with excess fat, it struggles to perform these functions efficiently. Over time, this can lead to more serious health problems, including cirrhosis, liver failure, and even liver cancer. Now you might think NAFLD only affects people with unhealthy lifestyles. But remember, it's not just about the alcohol. Even if you're a teetotaler, you could still be at risk. NAFLD is strongly linked to metabolic syndrome, a cluster of conditions including obesity, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and abnormal cholesterol levels. It's also important to know that NAFLD is a spectrum of diseases ranging from simple fat accumulation in the liver known as steatosis to a more severe form called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or NASH, which involves inflammation and damage to liver cells. Now that we've grasped what NAFLD is, let's delve into its causes and risk factors. What causes NAFLD? Are there certain risk factors we should watch out for? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, isn't caused by alcohol intake, as the name suggests. Instead, it's primarily driven by a mix of genetic and lifestyle factors. Let's delve a bit deeper into these causes. NAFLD often goes hand-in-hand -hand with conditions that lead to metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a cluster of conditions, including increased blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, and abnormal cholesterol or triglyceride levels. These conditions occur together and increase the risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. Speaking of diabetes, it's one of the significant risk factors for NAFLD. People with type 2 diabetes are at a higher risk of developing the disease due to insulin resistance, which leads to an accumulation of fat in the liver. Another closely linked condition is obesity. Obesity, particularly when fat is distributed around the abdomen, increases the risk of NAFLD. This is because abdominal fat releases fatty acids into the bloodstream that can accumulate in the liver, leading to fatty liver disease. High cholesterol and high triglycerides are also risk factors. When these lipids are high in the bloodstream, they can deposit in the liver and contribute to fatty liver disease. Genetics also play a role in NAFLD. Certain genes have been associated with an increased risk of developing the disease. Now let's talk about lifestyle. A sedentary lifestyle and poor diet, particularly a diet high in fats and sugars, increase the risk of NAFLD. This is because they contribute to obesity and insulin resistance, both of which are risk factors for the disease. 
In contrast, a healthy lifestyle that includes regular physical activity and a balanced diet can help prevent NAFLD. Exercise helps control weight, reduces insulin resistance, and helps keep your liver healthy. A diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins, and low in saturated fats, trans fats, and cholesterol can help prevent NAFLD. So what's the takeaway here? Well, to reduce your risk of NAFLD, it's important to maintain a healthy weight, manage conditions like diabetes and high cholesterol, and lead an active lifestyle with a balanced diet. Understanding the causes and risk factors helps in prevention, but how does NAFLD develop in our bodies? Let's take a microscopic journey into our body and see how NAFLD develops. Imagine your body as a bustling city and your liver, the city's waste disposal facility. It's a powerhouse of detoxification, tirelessly working to keep the city clean and healthy. But sometimes things go awry. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or NAFLD occurs when more fat is deposited in the liver than it can process and dispose of. This is akin to the city's waste disposal facility getting overwhelmed with trash leading to a pileup. Our liver is designed to handle a certain amount of fat. It breaks down the fat and sends it back into the bloodstream, where it's used for energy or stored in adipose tissue. However, when we consume too many calories, especially from fats and sugars, or when our metabolism is out of sync, the liver gets swamped with more fat than it can handle. This excessive fat then starts to accumulate in the liver cells, a condition known as steatosis or fatty liver. Imagine the liver cells like tiny rooms within the waste facility, now cluttered with unprocessed fat. This is the first stage of NAFLD, and at this point, the liver can still function fairly well, even though it's not at its best. But if the fat keeps piling up and no action is taken, things take a turn for the worse. The liver, under constant stress, starts to get inflamed, this inflammation can damage the liver cells and cause them to die, leading to scar tissue. It's like a fire breaking out in the already cluttered waste facility, causing damage to the structure. This stage of NAFLD is known as non-alcoholic statohepatitis, or NASH. It's more severe and can lead to serious complications like cirrhosis and liver cancer. The once efficient waste disposal facility is now struggling to function, and the city's health is at risk. That's how NAFLD develops, but how can we manage it? Let's delve into that next and explore the strategies to keep our liver, our body's vital waste disposal facility, running smoothly. NAFLD might sound scary, but there are ways to manage it. The primary strategy for managing this condition revolves around lifestyle changes. Now you're probably thinking, oh, I've heard this before, but let's break it down. The first lifestyle change is diet. It's essential to maintain a balanced diet, rich in fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains. Reducing intake of fats, particularly saturated and trans fats, is also crucial. Now this doesn't mean you can never enjoy a slice of pizza or a scoop of ice cream, it's all about moderation, folks. Secondly, let's talk about exercise. Regular physical activity is key in managing NAFLD, it helps in reducing your weight, improving insulin resistance, and decreasing the fat in your liver. So, whether it's a brisk walk, a yoga session, or a game of soccer with friends, find a form of exercise that you love and stick to it. Now in some cases, lifestyle changes might not be enough and medical interventions could be necessary. This could involve medications to control cholesterol, diabetes, or other conditions that contribute to NAFLD. In rare cases, if the liver damage is severe, a liver transplant might be considered. But remember, these decisions are made in consultation with healthcare professionals who understand your unique condition. Speaking of healthcare professionals, Regular checkups are an integral part of managing NAFLD. These checkups help monitor the progression of the disease and adjust your treatment plan as needed. It's like a car service, but for your body. So to wrap it up, managing NAFLD involves a combination of a healthy diet, regular exercise, potential medical interventions, and regular checkups. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution, but a tailored approach that works for you. While managing NAFLD is crucial, being aware of its potential complications is equally important, but we'll save that discussion for our next scene. Stay tuned. If left unchecked, NAFLD can lead to some serious health problems. Just like a ripple in a pond, the effects of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease can spread, causing complications that affect not only the liver, but also other parts of the body. So what exactly can happen if NAFLD progresses unchecked? Well, one possibility is liver fibrosis. This is when the healthy tissue in your liver gets replaced by scar tissue. It's a bit like if you tried to patch up a hole in a pair of jeans with duct tape. Sure, it covers the hole, but it's not exactly flexible or functional, is it? 
In the same way, the scar tissue in the liver hinders its functionality, making it harder for your liver to do its job. If liver fibrosis continues, it can develop into cirrhosis. This is a more severe form of liver damage, where the liver becomes so scarred that it can't function properly. It's like if you tried to use a clogged up sponge to clean a dish. It just doesn't work as well, right? But the complications don't stop there. In the worst case scenario, NAFLD can lead to liver cancer. This is when the liver cells start to grow uncontrollably, forming a tumor. It's a serious condition that requires immediate medical attention. Now, if this sounds a bit doom and gloom, don't worry. The key to preventing these complications is early detection and management. By catching NAFLD early, you can take steps to manage it and stop it from progressing. This could be through lifestyle changes, medical interventions, or a combination of both. Remember, your liver is not a lost cause. With the right care and attention, it's possible to halt the progression of NAFLD and protect your liver from further damage. So, take care of your liver, and it will take care of you. NAFLD doesn't exist in isolation. Let's explore its link with other metabolic disorders. Did you know NAFLD has close links with other metabolic disorders? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease isn't just a standalone issue. It's a piece of a larger complex puzzle that includes other metabolic disorders like diabetes, heart disease, and metabolic syndrome. Let's start with diabetes, specifically type 2. Diabetes is characterized by high blood sugar levels and insulin resistance, conditions that can also contribute to the buildup of fat in the liver. This creates a sort of vicious cycle where diabetes and NAFLD feed off each other, each condition exacerbating the other. Then, we have heart disease. An unhealthy liver can lead to an increase in bad cholesterol and triglycerides, both of which are major contributors to heart disease. If left unchecked, this can result in blocked arteries and, ultimately, heart attacks or strokes. Next up, metabolic syndrome. This term refers to a group of conditions that occur together, increasing your risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. These conditions include increased blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, and abnormal cholesterol or triglyceride levels. NAFLD is often considered a component of metabolic syndrome due to its association with these conditions. But here's the silver lining. By managing NAFLD, you can also help control these related conditions. For instance, a healthy diet and regular exercise not only reduce liver fat, but also help regulate blood sugar levels and improve heart health. Therefore, a comprehensive approach to manage NAFLD can have a profound impact on your overall health. Remember, the liver plays a crucial role in your body's metabolism. It's the organ that turns what you eat and drink into energy and nutrients your body can use. So when the liver isn't functioning properly, it can throw your whole system off balance. In conclusion, NAFLD isn't an isolated issue. It's deeply intertwined with other metabolic disorders. Understanding this connection is key to managing NAFLD and maintaining overall health. That's a lot of information, isn't it? Let's quickly recap. We've covered a lot of ground today, so let's quickly revisit the key points. We started our journey by understanding what non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, is. It's a condition characterized by an excessive accumulation of fat in the liver and it's not associated with alcohol consumption. This disease is more common than you might think and underlines the importance of maintaining good liver health. We then explored the causes and risk factors associated with NAFLD. It's primarily linked to obesity, type 2 diabetes, and high cholesterol levels. The role of lifestyle cannot be overlooked in this context, as unhealthy habits can significantly contribute to the development of the disease. Next, we dived into the mechanism of action, understanding how NAFLD develops in the liver. We learned about the progression from simple steatosis, which is fat accumulation, to non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or NASH, which is inflammation and damage to the liver cells. In terms of management, we discussed how lifestyle changes are the primary strategy. Regular exercise, a balanced diet, and regular checkups with healthcare professionals are crucial in managing NAFLD. There are also medical interventions available when necessary. We also talked about the potential complications of NAFLD, including liver fibrosis, cirrhosis, and liver cancer. Early detection and management are key to preventing these serious conditions. Finally, we touched on the link between NAFLD and other metabolic disorders. Managing NAFLD can also help control related conditions like diabetes, heart disease, and metabolic syndrome. So as you can see, understanding NAFLD is not just about liver health, but about overall well-being. 
it's crucial to consult healthcare providers for personal advice. They can provide a personalized plan based on your health history and current situation. Thank you for tuning in today. Remember, your health is in your hands. So if you found value in this video, please hit that like button. Sharing it with your friends, family, or anyone who might benefit from it can make a big difference. And if you haven't already, do subscribe to our channel to stay updated on the latest health topics. Your engagement helps us reach more people and spread awareness about these significant health issues. Please note that the content provided in this video is for educational purposes only. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking it because of something you have heard on this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more such informative videos. Stay healthy, stay informed, stay smart, and stay healthy. Hello and welcome to the Victory Education Lounge. If you're eager to learn more about health and wellness, you're in the right place. Today, we're ready to unravel the complexities of diabetes and its complications. We'll explore the causes, the management, and the impacts of this chronic condition. But before we embark on this journey, remember to engage with us by hitting that like button, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a comment below. Now, without further ado, let's get started. First off, what is diabetes? Picture it as a challenging puzzle that your body needs to solve every day. When you eat, your body breaks down the food into glucose, a type of sugar, which is then released into your bloodstream. Your body needs this glucose for energy, but to use it effectively, it needs a hormone called insulin, which is like a key that unlocks your cells, allowing glucose to enter and be used for energy. But here's where the puzzle gets tricky for those with diabetes. Their bodies either don't produce enough insulin, produce no insulin at all, or the insulin they do produce isn't used effectively. This results in high levels of glucose in the bloodstream, which can lead to a variety of health issues. Now there are different types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, typically diagnosed in children and young adults, is an autoimmune condition where the body mistakenly attacks the insulin-producing cells in the pancreas, leading to little or no insulin production. Type 2 diabetes, the most common form, usually develops in adulthood, although it's increasingly being diagnosed in younger individuals. Here, your body becomes resistant to insulin or doesn't produce enough of it. And then there's gestational diabetes which occurs in some women during pregnancy due to hormonal changes that make the body less responsive to insulin. Most of the time this type of diabetes goes away after the baby is born but it does increase the mother's risk of developing type 2 diabetes later in life. So, what causes these different types of diabetes? Well, it's a combination of factors, genetics play a role as does lifestyle for type 2 diabetes, with factors like obesity, physical inactivity, and poor diet increasing the risk. Understanding diabetes is the first step in managing it. The goal is to keep blood glucose levels within a target range, which is achieved through a combination of medication, diet, and exercise. It's like solving the puzzle daily, but with the right knowledge and tools, it's entirely doable. Let's break down the science behind it and how it's managed. In diabetes, your body either doesn't make enough insulin or can't use it as well as it should, leading to elevated blood sugar levels. Insulin, a hormone produced by your pancreas, acts like a key to let glucose from the food you eat pass from the bloodstream into cells to produce energy. When insulin isn't doing its job, that sugar continues to circulate in your blood, causing high blood sugar levels. This is the underlying mechanism of diabetes. There are several types of diabetes, each with its own unique causes and management methods. In type 1 diabetes, your immune system attacks and destroys cells in your pancreas that make insulin. People with this type have to take insulin every day to stay alive. Type 2 diabetes, which is far more common, involves your body not making enough insulin or not using it well. It's often managed with lifestyle changes, oral medications and sometimes insulin. Gestational diabetes, which occurs during pregnancy, can lead to future health risks for both mother and baby. It's typically managed with diet and exercise and sometimes medication. And then there's pre-diabetes, where your blood sugar levels are higher than normal but not high enough to be diagnosed as diabetes. Pre-diabetes can often be reversed with lifestyle changes. Managing diabetes effectively is not just about taking medication, it's a whole lifestyle approach that includes a healthy diet, regular exercise, maintaining a healthy weight, 
and regular monitoring of blood sugar levels. It's also about managing stress, getting enough sleep, and quitting smoking. Medication for diabetes aims to lower your blood sugar levels, and what type you take depends on your health, type of diabetes, and personal preferences. Some people with diabetes need to take insulin while others can manage their condition with oral or other injectable medications. Diet plays a crucial role in managing diabetes. Eating a balanced diet rich in fruits, vegetables, lean proteins and whole grains can help manage your blood sugar levels. Regular physical activity also helps your body use insulin more efficiently. But why is it crucial to manage it effectively? Let's find out. When diabetes is not well managed, it can lead to serious health problems. The high blood sugar levels associated with diabetes can damage various parts of the body over time, leading to a range of complications. Let's get into the details, shall we? First up we have heart disease and stroke. See high blood sugar can damage your blood vessels making them more susceptible to plaque buildup. When this happens your risk for heart disease and stroke skyrockets. But don't fret, managing your blood sugar levels and maintaining a heart healthy lifestyle can help decrease this risk. Next we have kidney disease. Your kidneys are responsible for filtering waste from your blood. However, high blood sugar levels can damage these filtering units over time, leading to kidney disease and, in severe cases, kidney failure. Early detection can prevent or slow down the progression of kidney disease, so regular checkups are a must. Moving on, let's talk about nerve damage, also known as neuropathy. High blood sugar can injure nerve fibers throughout your body, leading to numbness, pain, and weakness, particularly in your hands and feet. It can also cause digestive problems. Neuropathy can be managed through good blood sugar control and healthy lifestyle choices. Diabetes can also affect your sexual health, skin, and dental well-being. Men may experience erectile dysfunction, while skin and dental problems can affect anyone with diabetes. These complications arise from poor blood circulation and high blood sugar levels, but they can be managed with proper care and treatment. Lastly, people with diabetes are more susceptible to infections. High blood sugar levels can weaken the immune system, making it harder for the body to fight off bacteria and viruses. But don't worry, a healthy diet, regular exercise and good hygiene can help boost your immunity. As you can see diabetes can lead to a multitude of complications if not properly managed. But remember knowledge is power. Understanding these complications and how to prevent or manage them can significantly improve the quality of life for those living with diabetes. We're going to explore each major complication, understand how they develop, and learn how to prevent or manage them effectively. Did you know that diabetes can increase your risk of heart disease and stroke? Indeed, diabetes can significantly heighten the chances of developing cardiovascular diseases. But why is this the case? It all boils down to the effects of consistently high blood sugar levels on the blood vessels. Over time, elevated blood sugar can lead to the buildup of fatty deposits in the blood vessels, a condition known as atherosclerosis. These deposits can narrow the vessels reducing blood flow to the heart and brain which can ultimately result in a heart attack or stroke. In addition to atherosclerosis, diabetes can also cause inflammation in the blood vessels. This inflammation can lead to blood clots, another risk factor for heart disease and stroke. Furthermore, high blood pressure is common in people with diabetes, and this condition can strain the heart, damage blood vessels, and increase your risk of heart disease and stroke. So, how can you lower this risk? The first step is to manage your diabetes effectively. This means regularly monitoring your blood sugar levels and taking your medication as prescribed. Regular physical activity and a balanced diet can also play a crucial role in keeping your blood sugar levels within a healthy range. Another key aspect is to control your blood pressure and cholesterol levels. High blood pressure and high cholesterol can compound the risk of heart disease in people with diabetes. Therefore, it's important to have these levels checked regularly and managed effectively. Lastly, lifestyle changes can make a significant difference. This includes quitting smoking, limiting alcohol intake, maintaining a healthy weight, and managing stress. These measures not only lower your risk of heart disease and stroke, but also improve your overall health and well-being. Remember, having diabetes doesn't automatically mean you'll develop heart disease or have a stroke, but it does increase your risk. But with careful management and lifestyle changes, you can significantly lower this risk and lead a healthy life. Let's discuss how high blood sugar can damage your blood vessels and what you can do to lower this risk. Another major concern is kidney disease. Diabetes, both type 1 and type 2, can have a profound impact on these vital organs. The kidneys, each about the size of a fist, play a crucial role in filtering waste from our blood. However, high blood sugar levels can overwork them, slowly causing damage over time, 
This condition is known as diabetic nephropathy. Now you might wonder, how does this happen? Well, our kidneys are equipped with millions of tiny blood vessel clusters called glomeruli. These glomeruli filter our blood, removing waste and extra water. But when blood sugar levels are consistently high, these tiny filters start to leak, allowing protein to escape into the urine. Over time, this leakage can cause the kidneys to lose their filtering ability, leading to waste buildup in the blood. So, how do we know if our kidneys are affected? Early stages of kidney disease may not show any symptoms. However, as the condition progresses, symptoms such as swelling in the ankles, feet, or hands, increased need to urinate, loss of appetite, nausea, and fatigue can surface. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms, it's essential to consult with your healthcare provider. Now let's talk about safeguarding our kidneys. Maintaining blood sugar levels within the target range is the first line of defense. Regular exercise, a balanced diet, and taking prescribed medications can help achieve this. Additionally, keeping blood pressure under control is equally important as hypertension can accelerate kidney damage. Regular checkups and tests are crucial to monitor kidney function and detect any early signs of damage. Remember prevention is better than cure. By taking proactive steps we can protect our kidneys from damage and keep them functioning well. But if kidney disease does occur, early detection and intervention can slow its progression. So, keep an eye out for any changes in your body, stay in tune with your health, and always consult your healthcare provider with any concerns. We'll explore the signs to watch out for and how to protect your kidney health. Nerve damage, also known as neuropathy, is a common complication of diabetes. But what exactly is neuropathy? In simple terms, it's a condition where nerves in your body get damaged or disrupted. This can happen anywhere in your body, but most commonly, it affects the legs and feet. Now, you might wonder, how does diabetes cause nerve damage? Well, high blood sugar levels can injure nerve fibers throughout your body. This usually starts in the extremities like your fingers and toes, but it doesn't stop there. In some cases, it can even impact your digestive system, leading to what we call gastrointestinal autonomic neuropathy. Gastrointestinal autonomic neuropathy. It's a mouthful, isn't it? But don't let the name scare you. It simply refers to nerve damage in the digestive tract. When the nerves controlling your stomach and intestines are damaged, it can lead to all sorts of problems. These can range from feeling full after just a few bites of food, to experiencing nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation. So, how can we recognize these issues early on? The symptoms can vary, but common signs include unexplained weight loss, abdominal discomfort, changes in bowel habits, and heartburn. If you notice any of these symptoms, it's important to get in touch with your healthcare provider. But here's the good news. Managing these issues is possible. Maintaining good blood sugar control is crucial, as it can slow the progression of nerve damage and improve gastrointestinal symptoms. Regular exercise and a balanced diet can also help manage these complications. In some cases, medication might be necessary to ease symptoms. For instance, medication can help speed up digestion, manage constipation, or control diarrhea. A healthcare professional can guide you in choosing the best treatment plan based on your specific symptoms and overall health. Remember, early detection is key when it comes to managing diabetes complications. So, be proactive, keep an eye out for any changes, and don't hesitate to seek medical advice when needed. Let's delve into how to recognize these issues early and manage them. We've covered a lot today from understanding diabetes to its numerous complications. The key takeaway is the importance of regular monitoring and staying in tune with your body. Now, a vital disclaimer. This video is purely educational. It isn't a replacement for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. If you have concerns, reach out to your healthcare provider. Thanks for joining us in the Victory Education Lounge. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Stay informed, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we're going to dive into an important public health issue, chronic kidney disease or CKD. This disease is more common than you might think, affecting millions of people worldwide. It's a condition that's often overlooked, but its impact on public health is significant. Chronic kidney disease is a progressive condition where the kidneys slowly lose their ability to filter waste and excess fluids from the blood. If left unchecked, it can lead to serious health complications. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more such informative videos. Stay healthy, stay informed. Sharing it with your friends, family, or anyone who might benefit from it can make a big difference. Your engagement helps us reach more people and spread awareness about these significant health issues. One of the key aspects we'll uncover today is the intricate link between CKD and metabolic disorders. 
particularly type 2 diabetes. This relationship underscores the importance of understanding and managing CKD in our fight against widespread health issues. So, let's get started with understanding what chronic kidney disease really is. Chronic kidney disease, as the name suggests, is a long-term condition that affects the functioning of your kidneys. But what exactly does that mean? To understand we first need to know a bit about our kidneys and their role in our bodies. Our kidneys are two bean-shaped organs about the size of your fists, located just below your rib cage on either side of your spine. They are vital organs that perform several functions, the most important of which is filtering out waste products and excess fluid from our blood, which are then excreted through urine. Our kidneys also help regulate our blood pressure, maintain the balance of electrolytes, and produce certain hormones that help produce red blood cells, promote bone health, and regulate blood pressure. In chronic kidney disease, this filtering system breaks down over time. Unlike acute kidney injury, which happens suddenly, often as a result of injury or poisoning, CKD is a progressive disease. This means it develops slowly, often over many years, and can lead to kidney failure if not detected and treated early. In the early stages, you might not notice any symptoms because our kidneys are remarkably adaptable and can continue working even when they're not in perfect shape. However, as CKD progresses, the kidney's ability to perform their critical functions decreases, leading to a buildup of waste products and other complications. The severity of CKD is categorized into five stages, with stage 1 being the mildest and stage 5 or end-stage renal disease being the most severe, where the kidneys have lost almost all their function. Chronic kidney disease is a silent killer because it often goes unnoticed until the damage is severe. Early detection and treatment can slow down the progression of the disease, prevent complications, and improve the quality of life for those living with CKD. Now that we know what CKD is, let's explore what causes it. Several factors can contribute to the development of CKD, with some being more common than others. When we talk about chronic kidney disease, two major culprits are often at the forefront, diabetes and hypertension. Diabetes, especially type 2, can cause damage to the small blood vessels in the kidneys impairing their ability to filter waste from the blood. High blood pressure or hypertension also puts extra strain on the kidneys, which over time can lead to damage and decreased function. But these are not the only causes. Certain conditions can directly injure the kidneys such as glomerulonephritis, an inflammation of the kidneys filtering units, and polycystic kidney disease, a genetic disorder causing numerous cysts to grow in the kidneys. Now let's dive into the risk factors. Age is a significant one. As we get older, our kidney function naturally starts to decline, and the risk of CKD increases. Certain ethnic groups like African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asians, and Pacific Islanders have a higher risk of developing CKD, often due to higher rates of diabetes and hypertension in these populations. Family history is another important factor. If you have a close relative with kidney disease, your risk is higher. Obesity plays a role too, Excess weight, especially around the waist, is linked with diabetes, hypertension, and hence, CKD. Lifestyle factors cannot be ignored. Smoking for instance can damage blood vessels, reducing blood flow to the kidneys and impairing their function. Regular use of certain medications like over-the-counter painkillers can also harm the kidneys when used long-term or in high doses. Lastly, let's not forget about other health conditions that can impact your kidneys. People with heart disease, high cholesterol, or a history of acute kidney injury, are at an increased risk of CKD. So, as you can see, various factors can contribute to the development of chronic kidney disease. Some we can control like maintaining a healthy weight and not smoking, while others like age and family history, we cannot. Knowing these risk factors is only half the battle, understanding how CKD progresses is equally important. CKD progression involves a complex interplay of various factors and mechanisms. To understand this process we need to delve into the microscopic world of our kidneys. Picture this. Within each kidney, there are millions of tiny filtration units known as nephrons. These nephrons are crucial for maintaining our body's balance of water and various essential minerals. But, in chronic kidney disease these nephrons start to falter. Now let's zoom in further. Each nephron consists of a glomerulus, a tiny blood vessel cluster. This is where the magic, or rather, the science happens. The glomerulus filters your blood with waste and excess fluid forming urine, while important substances like proteins and red blood cells remain in the bloodstream. In CKD, damage to the glomerulus means this filtration process is compromised. Proteins that should stay in the blood leak into the urine, and waste products build up in the blood. As damage to the nephrons continues, the remaining healthy nephrons are forced to work harder, leading to further damage in a vicious cycle of kidney deterioration. 
This progressive loss of kidney function is reflected in the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. The GFR measures how well your kidneys are filtering wastes from your blood. When the GFR decreases, it's a clear sign that kidney function is declining. The progression of chronic kidney disease is divided into five stages based on the GFR. Stage 1 represents the mildest form with normal or high GFR, and stages 2 to 4 represent progressively lower GFR. Finally, in stage 5, also known as end-stage kidney disease, the GFR drops to a critically low level, and the kidneys are no longer able to function adequately. By understanding this intricate dance of cellular processes, we can better appreciate the importance of early detection in CKD. After all, the earlier the disease is spotted, the more we can do to slow down its progression. Identifying CKD early and managing it effectively can drastically slow down its progression. Managing CKD involves a combination of lifestyle changes and medical interventions. This isn't just about managing the disease itself, but also about mitigating the risk factors that contribute to kidney damage. Let's start with lifestyle changes. A healthy diet, rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, low in salt and processed foods, can help control blood pressure and blood sugar levels, reducing the strain on your kidneys. Regular exercise, be it walking, swimming, or biking, can help maintain a healthy weight and lower blood pressure, thus reducing the risk of further kidney damage. Smoking cessation is another crucial step as smoking can accelerate kidney damage. Now let's talk about medications. A variety of drugs are used to manage the symptoms of CKD and slow the progression of the disease. These may include angiotensin-converting enzyme AC inhibitors or angiotensin II receptor blockers ARBs, to control high blood pressure, diuretics to remove excess fluid from the body, and medications to control high cholesterol levels. It's important to remember that these medications should be taken strictly under your doctor's supervision. Regular monitoring is a key part of managing CKD. Kidney function tests, blood pressure checks, and regular assessments of your blood glucose and cholesterol levels can help keep track of your kidney health and adjust your treatment plan accordingly. In some cases when kidney function has declined significantly, dialysis or a kidney transplant might be needed. Dialysis is a process that artificially removes waste products and excess fluid from the blood when the kidneys can no longer do so. A kidney transplant, on the other hand, involves replacing the diseased kidney with a healthy one from a donor. However, CKD can also lead to a host of complications if not managed well. So, it's not just about managing the disease but also about adopting a holistic approach to your overall health. This includes taking care of your mental health, staying informed about your condition, and maintaining regular contact with your healthcare team. Remember, you are not alone in this journey, and there are many resources and support systems available to help you navigate through this. CKD can lead to a range of complications that can severely affect a person's quality of life. Chronic kidney disease, or CKD, is much more than just a kidney disorder. It's a condition that can have far-reaching effects on your body, leading to a variety of complications both in the short term and the long term. In the short term, CKD can lead to anemia, a condition where your body doesn't have enough red blood cells to carry oxygen to your tissues. This can leave you feeling tired and weak, and can even affect your ability to think clearly. CKD can also lead to electrolyte imbalances, as your kidneys are responsible for maintaining the right balance of minerals in your body. This can lead to issues like irregular heart rhythms and muscle weakness. Over time, the complications of CKD can become even more serious. One of the most significant long-term complications is cardiovascular disease. When your kidneys aren't functioning properly, it can lead to high blood pressure and the buildup of fats and cholesterol in your blood vessels, increasing your risk of heart disease and stroke. Bone disorders are another long-term complication of CKD. Your kidneys play a crucial role in maintaining the health of your bones by balancing calcium and phosphate levels in your body. When these levels are out of balance it can lead to weakened bones and an increased risk of fractures. And let's not forget about the impact of CKD on your overall quality of life. The fatigue, the constant need for medical care, the dietary restrictions, all of these can take a toll on your mental and emotional well-being. But it's not all doom and gloom. Understanding these complications and how they affect your body is the first step towards managing them. With the right treatment and lifestyle changes, it's possible to slow the progression of CKD and maintain a good quality of life. One key aspect of CKD is its profound link with metabolic disorders, particularly type 2 diabetes. But more on that in the next scene. Stay tuned! 
The relationship between chronic kidney disease and metabolic disorders like type 2 diabetes is significant. Metabolic disorders are conditions that disrupt the body's normal metabolic function. When we talk about metabolic disorders we typically think about conditions like diabetes, obesity and metabolic syndrome, which includes a cluster of conditions like increased blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, and abnormal cholesterol levels. So, how are these conditions linked to chronic kidney disease or CKD? Well, the kidneys are vital organs that play an essential role in maintaining the body's metabolic balance. They filter out waste products, control the body's fluid balance, and regulate electrolytes. When the kidneys are damaged or diseased, as in the case of CKD, they can't perform these functions efficiently, which can lead to metabolic imbalances. Type 2 diabetes, for instance, is a major risk factor for CKD. High blood sugar levels over time can damage the kidney's blood vessels, impairing their ability to filter waste products. What's more, the presence of CKD can make diabetes management more challenging, creating a vicious cycle of deteriorating kidney function and worsening blood sugar control. Obesity is another metabolic disorder closely linked to CKD. Excess body weight puts strain on the kidneys, increasing the risk of kidney damage. Moreover, obesity often comes hand in hand with other conditions like hypertension and diabetes, which further increase the risk of CKD. Metabolic syndrome, with its cluster of conditions, can also contribute to kidney damage. High blood pressure, for example, can strain the kidney's blood vessels, while abnormal cholesterol levels can lead to atherosclerosis, a condition that narrows and hardens the arteries, including those in the kidneys. It's clear that the link between CKD and metabolic disorders is a complex and intertwined one. But the good news is that managing these metabolic conditions effectively can help slow down the progression of CKD, Regular exercise, a healthy diet, weight control, and appropriate medication can all play a part in maintaining kidney health, even in the presence of metabolic disorders. Managing these conditions effectively can significantly slow down the progression of CKD. So that was a comprehensive look at chronic kidney disease. We dove into what it is, highlighting the crucial role our kidneys play, and how CKD differs from acute kidney damage. We explored the primary causes and risk factors including diabetes, hypertension, age, ethnicity, family history, and lifestyle choices. We also examined how CKD progresses at a cellular level, focusing on the decline in the glomerular filtration rate and the stages of CKD. We discussed the lifestyle changes in medications used in managing CKD and when interventions like dialysis or a kidney transplant might be necessary. Moreover, we touched on the complications of CKD, both short-term and long-term, and how they impact overall health. Lastly, we connected the dots between CKD and metabolic disorders like type 2 diabetes, emphasizing the importance of managing these conditions to slow CKD progression. Remember, if you or a loved one are dealing with any of these issues, it's important to consult a healthcare provider. Thank you for watching, we hope you found this video informative. Chronic kidney disease is a complex condition, but understanding it is the first step to managing it effectively. Our channel is dedicated to providing you with the knowledge to navigate your health journey with confidence. We have more videos and playlists that delve deeper into this topic, and many others. Remember, every like, share, and subscription helps us continue to create content that empowers you. So, if you found value in this video, please hit that like button. Sharing it with your friends, family, or anyone who might benefit from it can make a big difference. And if you haven't already, do subscribe to our channel to stay updated on the latest health topics. Your engagement helps us reach more people and spread awareness about these significant health issues. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more such informative videos. Stay healthy, stay informed. Welcome to the Victory Education Lounge and to our Health Insights series. On the docket today is a relatively new complication associated with diabetes, known as diabetic pneumopathy. In the next 15 minutes, we're going to delve into the heart of what diabetic pneumopathy is, how it works, and how to manage it. We'll also discuss the potential consequences and treatment considerations for this complication. In an ever-evolving world of health and wellness, it's essential to stay informed. If you find value in these insights, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comment section. Your engagement helps us create more content that matters to you. So buckle up and get ready as we embark on this enlightening journey into the world of diabetic pneumopathy. Let's get started. Diabetic pneumopathy is a term that is gaining traction among medical professionals. 
It's a mouthful, isn't it? But don't worry, we'll break it down together. This term is used to describe a series of lung complications that can occur in individuals living with diabetes. Now you might be wondering, what do diabetes and lungs have to do with each other? Well, that's exactly what we're here to explore. So let's start with the basics. Our lungs are essential organs that help us breathe and supply oxygen to our bodies. In people with diabetes, these crucial organs can sometimes be affected. This is where the term diabetic pneumopathy comes in. It covers a broad spectrum of lung-related complications that can occur in those with diabetes. These complications range from an increased susceptibility to lung infections, to changes in lung function, and even alterations in lung structure. That's right, diabetes can impact the lungs in more ways than one might initially think. For instance, some people with diabetes might find themselves more prone to lung infections. This can be due to a variety of reasons, including an altered immune response, a common feature in those with diabetes. Additionally, some individuals may experience a reduction in lung function. This can manifest as difficulty in breathing or a feeling of being short of breath, even during light activities. Perhaps one of the more significant changes can be alterations in lung structure. In certain cases, diabetes can lead to changes in the tissues of the lungs, making them less efficient at their job of supplying oxygen to our bodies. Now, you might be asking, why is all this happening? Well, the mechanisms behind diabetic pneumopathy are complex and multifaceted, involving a mix of chronic inflammation, changes in immune response, and alterations in lung tissue due to high blood sugar levels. But why is this happening, and what does it mean for those living with diabetes? We've barely scratched the surface of diabetic pneumopathy, so let's delve deeper into the mechanisms behind this in our next segment. The pathophysiology of diabetic pneumopathy is complex. With that said, let's try to break it down into more digestible pieces. It starts with understanding the basics of diabetes itself. In diabetes, high blood sugar levels are a common problem. This excess sugar can bind to proteins in a process known as glycation. When glycation occurs in the lungs, it can affect the normal function of lung proteins leading to stiffness and reduced elasticity of lung tissues. This can then contribute to impaired lung function and increased susceptibility to respiratory infections. But that's not all. Chronic inflammation is another key player in the story of diabetic pneumopathy. You see, diabetes is often associated with a state of chronic inflammation in the body. This inflammation can damage various organs, including the lungs. It can lead to structural changes in the lung tissues making them less efficient at their job of oxygenating the blood. Now, let's add another layer to this, the immune response. In people with diabetes, the immune system's response to infections can be impaired. This is partly due to the high blood sugar levels, which can interfere with the normal functioning of immune cells. The result, a body that's less equipped to fight off lung infections, making those with diabetes more prone to developing these infections. At this point, you might be wondering, why the lungs? Why not other organs? That's a good question. The lungs are particularly vulnerable to the effects of diabetes because they have a high rate of glucose consumption, which means they are exposed to higher levels of blood sugar. This makes them more susceptible to the damaging effects of high blood sugar levels, including glycation and inflammation. So in a nutshell, the mechanisms behind diabetic pneumopathy involve a trifecta of high blood sugar levels, chronic inflammation, and an altered immune response. These factors can lead to changes in lung tissue structure, impaired lung function, and an increased susceptibility to lung infections. But remember, knowledge is power. Understanding these mechanisms can help us find ways to manage this complication and improve the quality of life for those living with diabetes. Whether it's through better diabetes management, lifestyle changes, or new treatment strategies, there's hope for mitigating the impacts of diabetic pneumopathy. This section has examined these processes in detail, explaining how diabetes can impact lung health. And while it might seem a bit daunting, it's important to remember that every step we take in understanding is a step towards better management and treatment. So, let's continue the journey. Managing diabetic pneumopathy involves a proactive approach to both diabetes and lung health. 
This condition does not exist in isolation. It is an interplay of various factors, including blood sugar levels, immune response, and overall health status. Therefore, the management strategy has to be comprehensive, focusing on both diabetes and lung health. Regular monitoring of blood sugar levels is crucial. Uncontrolled diabetes can exacerbate lung complications, so it's essential to keep blood sugar levels within the recommended range. This could involve medication adjustments, dietary changes, and regular exercise. But managing blood sugar levels is just one piece of the puzzle. Regular checkups play a significant role in managing this condition. Regular medical exams allow healthcare providers to monitor lung function, detect any changes early, and adjust treatment plans as necessary. Lung function tests, chest x-rays, and other diagnostic tools can help in early detection and management of diabetic pneumopathy. Vaccinations are another critical component of management. People with diabetes are more susceptible to infections, including lung infections, which can further deteriorate lung health. Therefore, staying up to date with recommended vaccinations, such as the annual flu vaccine and the pneumonia vaccine, can significantly reduce the risk of lung infections. Finally, lifestyle changes can have a profound impact on managing diabetic pneumopathy. A healthy lifestyle which includes regular exercise, a balanced diet, adequate sleep, and stress management can improve both diabetes and lung health. Regular exercise can help control blood sugar levels, and certain exercises can even improve lung capacity. A balanced diet can help manage blood sugar levels and support overall health. Adequate sleep and stress management are also linked to better blood sugar control and immune function. In conclusion, managing diabetic pneumopathy involves a proactive, comprehensive approach. Regular monitoring of blood sugar levels, regular medical checkups, vaccinations, and healthy lifestyle changes are all critical components of this approach. With these strategies in place, it is possible to reduce the risk of developing this complication. We have discussed the importance of regular checkups, vaccinations, and lifestyle changes that can help reduce the risk of developing this complication. If left unmanaged, diabetic pneumopathy can lead to severe consequences, a statement that carries significant weight and requires our attention. The consequences of unmanaged diabetic pneumopathy are far-reaching, impacting not only the individual's quality of life, but also their overall health and well-being. One of the most immediate consequences is an increased risk of pulmonary infections. Due to changes in lung tissue and impaired immune response, individuals with this condition may find themselves more susceptible to lung infections, including pneumonia and bronchitis. As the condition progresses, individuals may experience a reduction in lung capacity. This is primarily due to the stiffness and reduced elasticity of lung tissues, which impacts the lung's ability to expand and contract effectively. As a result, individuals may experience shortness of breath even during mild physical activities, reducing their overall physical endurance and capability. In extreme cases, if the condition is left unchecked, it can lead to respiratory failure. This is a serious, life-threatening condition where the lungs fail to deliver enough oxygen to the body or fail to remove carbon dioxide from the body. It's a state that requires immediate medical attention and often results in hospitalization. But it's not all doom and gloom. The key to mitigating these consequences lies in early detection and proactive management. Regular checkups with healthcare providers, monitoring of blood sugar levels, and maintaining a healthy lifestyle can significantly reduce the risk of developing these serious complications. Moreover, being aware of the potential risks and symptoms associated with diabetic pneumopathy can lead to early diagnosis and treatment, which can considerably improve health outcomes. Understanding the potential consequences of unmanaged diabetic pneumopathy is the first step towards creating an effective management plan. It emphasizes the importance of taking active measures to manage diabetes and lung health simultaneously. This segment has explored these potential consequences, emphasizing the importance of early detection and management. Remember, knowledge is power. Being informed about the potential risks and taking steps to mitigate these risks can make a world of difference. Treatment for diabetic pneumopathy involves a multifaceted approach. This is because the condition itself is complex, involving both the respiratory and endocrine systems, 
and is influenced by a multitude of factors, including lifestyle and individual health status. First and foremost, managing the diabetes itself is crucial. This may mean more aggressive control of blood sugar levels to prevent the glycation of lung proteins. This could involve adjusting insulin doses, changing medication, or even incorporating new therapies as they become available. It's important to have regular discussions with your healthcare provider to ensure your diabetes management plan is as effective as possible. In terms of improving lung function, there are several medications that can help. For instance, bronchodilators can be used to relax the muscles around the airways, making it easier to breathe. Inhaled corticosteroids may be used to reduce inflammation in the lungs. However, the use of these medications will depend on the specific lung conditions present and the patient's overall health status. In addition to medication, there are also therapies available to address specific lung conditions. For instance, pulmonary rehabilitation can help improve lung function, reduce symptoms, and improve quality of life. This typically involves a combination of exercise training, education, and behavior change, all designed to help patients breathe more easily and function more fully in their daily lives. But it's not just about medication and therapy. Lifestyle changes can also play a significant role in managing diabetic pneumopathy. This might include quitting smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, and ensuring a balanced diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and lean proteins. Regular exercise can also help increase lung capacity and improve overall health. Now, let's not forget about the importance of ongoing research in this field. Scientists are continually exploring new ways to treat diabetic pneumopathy, from novel medications to innovative therapies. Clinical trials are ongoing, and there is a great deal of hope for the future. As we learn more about the mechanisms underlying this condition, we will undoubtedly develop more effective ways to treat it. For those living with diabetes, it's crucial to stay informed and be proactive about your health. This means not only managing your diabetes and any associated complications, but also staying up to date with the latest research and treatment options. It's about taking an active role in your healthcare and working closely with your healthcare provider to ensure the best possible outcomes. We have explored current treatment options and ongoing research in this field, giving you a comprehensive view of how this condition can be managed effectively. Remember, the goal is not just to treat diabetic pneumopathy, but to improve quality of life and overall health outcomes for those living with diabetes. As we wrap up, remember that understanding and managing diabetic pneumopathy is crucial for those living with diabetes. We've explored this newly recognized complication, delving into the intricate mechanisms that underpin its development. From the role of chronic inflammation and altered immune responses to the impact of high blood sugar levels on lung tissue structure, we've seen how diabetes can significantly affect lung health. We've also discussed proactive management strategies, emphasizing the importance of regular monitoring, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and adjusting diabetes management plans when necessary. The potential consequences of unmanaged diabetic pneumopathy underscore the importance of early detection and management. Finally, we've looked at treatment considerations from aggressive diabetes management to specific therapies for improving lung function. This multifaceted approach is crucial for effectively managing this condition. If you found this information helpful, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. We love hearing your thoughts and suggestions for future topics. Please note that the content provided in this video is for educational purposes only. It's designed to share knowledge and provoke thought, not to replace the personalized guidance offered by healthcare professionals. We've, we've discussed diabetic pneumopathy and its implications, but remember, every individual's health journey is unique. Therefore, the specifics of managing and treating this condition can vary widely from person to person. This video should not be used as a tool for self-diagnosis or a regimen for self-treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have about your health or a medical condition. It's crucial to have open and ongoing conversations with your healthcare team, ensuring you receive the best care tailored to your needs. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it 
because of something you have heard in this video. Stay healthy. So if you found value in this video, please hit that like button. Sharing it with your friends, family, or anyone who might benefit from it can make a big difference. And if you haven't already, do subscribe to our channel to stay updated on the latest health topics. Your engagement helps us reach more people and spread awareness about these significant health issues. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more such informative videos. Stay healthy, stay informed. Hello and welcome to the Victory Education Lounge. We're excited to present our quick guide on diabetes mellitus. Our aim is to help you understand the disease, offering insights and tips to managing diabetes to avoid nasty complications. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel for more insightful content, and leave a comment below to share your thoughts and experiences with this disease. We love hearing from you and your engagement helps us create better content tailored to your interests. Did you know that nearly 500 million people worldwide are living with diabetes as we speak? Quite a startling statistic, isn't it? This is the reality of diabetes mellitus, a condition that is rapidly becoming a global health crisis. This surge is not just impacting individuals, but straining health systems worldwide. The urgency to address, understand and manage this condition has never been more pressing. With such staggering numbers understanding diabetes mellitus becomes not just important but essential. So, what exactly is diabetes mellitus? Well, think of it like a car. Just as a car needs fuel to run, our bodies need glucose, a type of sugar for energy. This glucose comes from the food we eat, and insulin, a hormone produced by the pancreas, is the key that allows glucose to enter our cells to be used as fuel. Now, imagine if the car's fuel system malfunctions. It's the same with diabetes. In this condition, our bodies either don't produce enough insulin or can't use it effectively, resulting in high levels of glucose in the blood. Over time, this can lead to serious health problems. There are three main types of diabetes mellitus. Type 1, type 2, and gestational diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, the body's immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys the insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. It's like losing the key to the car's fuel system. This type often develops in childhood or adolescence, but it can occur at any age. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, is akin to the car's fuel system becoming resistant to the key. The body either doesn't produce enough insulin or the cells become resistant to insulin's effects. This type is more common and usually occurs in adults, but it can also develop in children and adolescents. Lastly, gestational diabetes is a temporary condition that occurs during pregnancy similar to a temporary glitch in the car's fuel system. It can affect both the mother and the baby, but typically resolves after giving birth. Despite their differences, all types of diabetes have one thing in common. They cause an increase in blood glucose levels, which can lead to a range of health issues if not managed properly. So understanding diabetes isn't just about knowing its types, but also about recognizing how it affects our bodies and how we can manage it. Knowing the types of diabetes helps us understand how they affect our bodies differently. Scene script. Can you prevent diabetes mellitus? The answer is yes, particularly for type 2 diabetes. Let's dive into the world of prevention. You see, prevention is not merely about dodging the bullet. It's about taking control of your life, your health, and your future. A robust prevention strategy encompasses lifestyle modifications. And no, you don't have to turn your world upside down. Small, consistent changes can lead to significant results. Start with your diet. A balanced diet is not just a cliche phrase, it's a powerful tool. Picture your plate. Half of it should be filled with colorful fruits and vegetables, a quarter with lean protein, and the remaining quarter with whole grains. And remember to hydrate. Water is your best friend. Make it a habit of reaching for a glass of water rather than a sugary drink. Next, let's talk about exercise. Regular physical activity is a cornerstone of diabetes prevention. It helps control your weight, uses up glucose as energy, and makes your cells more responsive to insulin. And when we say exercise, we don't mean running a marathon. Moderate intensity activities like brisk walking, cycling, or even dancing can do the trick. Strive for at least 30 minutes of exercise most days of the week. Weight control is another critical aspect. Maintaining a healthy weight can significantly reduce your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. It's not about achieving an unrealistic body image but maintaining a weight that's healthy for your body type and height. Now, let's address those at risk. If you have a family history of diabetes or a personal history of gestational diabetes, you're at a higher risk. But don't let that scare you. Instead, let it motivate you to take action. 
regular checkups, blood sugar monitoring, and consultation with healthcare professionals can help you stay ahead of the game. So what's the takeaway? It's simple. Prevention is in your hands. You have the power to shape your health destiny. It's about making conscious choices every day, what to eat, how to move, and how to live. Remember, small changes can have a big impact on your health. Scene script, diabetes mellitus is not just about high blood sugar. It can lead to serious health complications both short-term and long-term. Let's delve into the short-term complications first. Hypoglycemia, also known as low blood sugar, can happen if you take too much insulin, skip a meal, or exercise more than usual. Symptoms can range from shakiness, sweating and rapid heartbeat to confusion and even loss of consciousness in severe cases. On the flip side there's hyperglycemia or high blood sugar which can occur when the body doesn't have enough insulin or can't use it properly. If left untreated, it can cause a condition called diabetic ketoacidosis. This is when your body, unable to use glucose for energy, starts breaking down fats, creating a buildup of acids in the bloodstream known as ketones. This can lead to a diabetic coma, if not addressed promptly. Now let's shift our focus to long-term complications. Over time, high blood sugar can damage your heart, leading to heart disease. It can cause blockages and hardening of the arteries, which can eventually lead to a heart attack or stroke. High blood sugar can also take a toll on your kidneys, leading to kidney damage or kidney disease. This is because excess sugar can overwork the kidneys as they filter your blood. Neuropathy or nerve damage is another long-term complication. This usually affects the nerves in the legs and feet, leading to numbness, pain, and loss of sensation. Then there's retinopathy, where high blood sugar damages the blood vessels in the retina, potentially leading to blindness. And let's not forget about foot problems. Diabetes can lead to poor blood flow and nerve damage in the feet, making wounds hard to heal and increasing the risk of infections and amputations. These complications paint a serious picture of why managing diabetes is so important. But remember, they're not inevitable. With the right precautions and care, you can prevent or delay them. Regular monitoring and medical checkups are key to preventing these complications. By staying vigilant and proactive, you can lead a healthy and fulfilling life even with diabetes. Living with diabetes is challenging, but with the right treatment and management, it is possible to lead a normal life. When it comes to managing diabetes, medications play a crucial role. Insulin therapy and oral medications are commonly prescribed to help regulate blood sugar levels. Insulin therapy is often used in type 1 diabetes, and sometimes in type 2, while oral medications are typically used for type 2 diabetes. However, taking medications alone isn't enough. Monitoring your blood sugar levels regularly is vital. This helps you and your healthcare provider understand how your body responds to your medication and lifestyle adjustments, and it aids in keeping your glucose levels within the target range set by your healthcare team. Speaking of healthcare teams, they play an integral role in your diabetes management. This team may include your primary care physician, a diabetes educator, a dietitian, a pharmacist, and even a mental health professional. They work together to provide you with personalized advice and strategies for managing your diabetes effectively. Now let's talk about daily routines. Regular blood sugar monitoring is a given, but what about your eating habits and physical activity? A balanced, nutritious diet and regular exercise can help manage your blood sugar levels and maintain a healthy weight both of which are essential in managing diabetes. But there's more to diabetes management than just physical health. Living with a chronic condition like diabetes can take a toll on your emotional and mental health. It's important to seek support when needed, whether it's from a mental health professional, a support group, or your loved ones. Finally, regular medical appointments are key. These checkups allow your healthcare team to monitor your progress adjust your treatment plan as needed and catch any potential complications early. In conclusion, managing diabetes involves a comprehensive approach that includes medication, regular monitoring, a healthy lifestyle, mental health support, and regular checkups. Remember your health is in your hands, stay informed, stay vigilant, and stay healthy. So we've taken a deep dive into diabetes mellitus today. We've learned that it's a condition that affects the way our bodies process glucose, with various types including type 1, type 2, and gestational diabetes. Each type has its unique characteristics but all involve an imbalance in the body's insulin production or use. We've explored how lifestyle modifications such as maintaining a balanced diet, regular exercise, and a healthy weight can help prevent or delay type 2 diabetes. 
We've also discussed how those at risk, such as those with a family history or a history of gestational diabetes, can benefit from these preventative measures. We've examined the possible complications of diabetes, both short-term ones like hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, and diabetic ketoacidosis, as well as long-term issues like heart disease, kidney damage, neuropathy, retinopathy, and foot problems. Regular monitoring and medical checkups are crucial to avoiding these complications. In terms of treatment, we've touched on medication options, the importance of blood sugar monitoring, and the role of healthcare professionals in managing this condition. We've underscored that daily management routines and emotional and mental health support are essential for those living with diabetes. Remember, this information is for educational purposes, and it's always best to consult healthcare professionals for personalized advice. With the right knowledge and management, it's entirely possible to lead a healthy and active life with diabetes. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more informative content. Stay healthy, stay informed. Welcome to our informative video series, Hypertension Another Silent Killer. In today's episode, we'll be exploring the critical issue of hypertension, a key factor in maintaining optimal health and wellness. In our dynamic, constantly changing world, understanding and managing hypertension is essential for a healthy life. This video delves into the science of hypertension, its effects on the body, and effective ways to manage and prevent it. If you're looking to navigate your health journey with informed confidence, this video is tailored for you. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and click the notification bell for more engaging content about making wise decisions for your health. Join us on this insightful voyage to comprehend and control hypertension. Always consult a healthcare professional before implementing any significant lifestyle adjustments. We're exploring the unseen world of hypertension, a quiet yet potent condition often underestimated. Hypertension, colloquially known as high blood pressure, is an intriguing yet bothersome health condition. It's a bit like the distant relative who overstays their welcome at family gatherings. You might not notice them at first but eventually their presence can't be ignored. Hypertension in essence is a situation where your blood decides to throw a rave party against your artery walls. The increased pressure of this relentless celebration can over time lead to severe health issues including heart disease. Picture it as a water hose. When the pressure is too high, it can damage the hose over time. Similarly, when blood pressure is too high, it can harm your arteries and your heart. Now you might be wondering why should I care about hypertension? Well, it's more common than you might think. It's a global health concern, affecting a significant portion of the adult population worldwide. Hypertension is often likened to a silent killer. It sneaks up on you quietly without any obvious symptoms, and if left unchecked, can lead to severe health complications. It's a bit like that sneaky plot twist in your favorite thriller movie, except in this case, you don't want to be caught off guard. Therefore, regular checkups are crucial for early detection. The good news is that hypertension is manageable, and with the right approach, its effects can be mitigated. So, now that we've introduced this silent but potent party crasher, you might be wondering, what causes hypertension, and how can I prevent it? Good questions. In our next segment, we'll dive into the causes of hypertension, exploring everything from genetics to lifestyle factors. Remember, knowledge is power. The more you understand about hypertension, the better equipped you are to manage it. Now that we've established what hypertension is, let's delve deeper into its causes. Hypertension can be caused by many factors, some within our control, others not so much. Let's unravel some of these causes. A diet high in salt can increase blood pressure, making your heart work overtime. Being a couch potato doesn't help either. Regular physical activity can help lower blood pressure, so, get moving. Now let's talk about stress. It's not just about being frazzled. Chronic stress can lead to unhealthy habits that contribute to hypertension. And what about genetics? Yes, they play a part too. If your parents or grandparents had hypertension, you might be more likely to develop it. Don't forget about chronic conditions like kidney disease which can also heighten your risk. And then there's obesity, tobacco use and excessive alcohol consumption. Each of these factors can push your blood pressure up into the danger zone. Understanding the causes helps us identify possible changes we can make. But first, let's look at the symptoms. The silent killer, as it's often called, is secretive indeed. Hypertension frequently goes unnoticed until it's too late. Picture this. You're walking around feeling fine, living your life, 
but inside your body, there's a silent battle going on. The pressure of your blood against your artery walls is higher than it should be. This might not sound like a big deal, but over time it can lead to serious health issues. Hypertension is often referred to as the silent killer, because it usually doesn't present any symptoms. You don't feel any different, you don't look any different. It's not like a runny nose or a cough that alerts you that something's off. That's why regular checkups are so important. They're like your secret weapon against this silent enemy. Now you might be wondering, what's the worst that could happen? Well, let's talk about that. If left unmanaged, hypertension can lead to a heart attack or stroke. The high pressure can cause a section of the heart muscle to be starved of oxygen, which can result in a heart attack. Similarly, it can cause a blood vessel in the brain to rupture or be blocked by a blood clot, leading to a stroke. Furthermore, hypertension can lead to an aneurysm. This is when the constant pressure causes a weak spot in your blood vessel to balloon out and potentially to rupture. It can also cause heart failure, where the heart can't pump blood as well as it should, and kidney problems where the arteries become weakened or narrowed. If that's not enough, hypertension can also affect your eyesight by causing thickened, narrowed or torn blood vessels in the eyes. It can also lead to metabolic syndrome, a cluster of conditions that increase the risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. With the severity of these complications, it's clear why prevention and early detection are key. Let's see how we can achieve that. Prevention is better than cure, especially when dealing with hypertension. Now you must be wondering, how can we prevent something that doesn't show explicit symptoms? Well, it's all about embracing a healthy lifestyle and regular monitoring. Let's start with the diet. Consuming a balanced diet low in salt and saturated fats is a great preventive measure. Think fresh fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains. It's time to say goodbye to processed foods that are often high in sodium and unhealthy fats. And don't forget, drinking plenty of water is equally important. Next, let's talk about exercise. Regular physical activity is a boon for your heart health. It doesn't mean you need to run a marathon or lift heavy weights. Even brisk walking, yoga, or dancing can do the trick. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate activity most days of the week. Weight management goes hand in hand with diet and exercise. Maintaining a healthy body weight can significantly reduce the risk of developing hypertension. It's not about drastic weight loss, but achieving and maintaining a weight that's healthy for your body type and age. Limiting alcohol intake is another preventive measure. While occasional sipping won't do much harm, excessive drinking can increase blood pressure levels. So, it's best to keep it moderate. And of course, if you're a smoker, quitting is a must. Smoking damages blood vessels, leading to hypertension and other health issues. Yes, quitting is hard, but think about the benefits. It's a life-saving decision. Lastly, don't forget about regular blood pressure monitoring. Regular checkups can help detect any rise in blood pressure early, allowing for timely intervention. Remember, these preventive measures don't just help fend off hypertension, but also contribute to overall health and well-being. It's like hitting multiple birds with one stone. Prevention is one aspect, but what if you already have hypertension? Don't worry, there are ways to manage it. But that's a discussion for another day. For now, let's focus on prevention because as they say, it's better to build a fence at the top of the cliff than to park an ambulance at the bottom. Being diagnosed with hypertension isn't a dead end. With the right approach, it can be managed effectively. So, what does the right approach look like? Let's delve into it. Firstly, lifestyle modifications sit at the heart of hypertension treatment. This involves a healthy diet, rich in fruits, vegetables, lean protein, and whole grains. Limiting sodium or salt intake can also make a significant impact. Imagine this, you're not just sprinkling less salt on your meals but you're also kicking the canned and processed foods off your grocery list. Sounds like a win-win, right? Next let's talk about physical activity. Regular exercise is key. It doesn't have to be a marathon or heavy weightlifting. Simple activities like brisk walking, swimming or cycling can do wonders. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise most days of the week. It's like signing a peace treaty with your heart. Then we have weight management. If you're overweight, shedding even a few pounds can lower your blood pressure. It's like taking a load off your heart, quite literally. Limiting alcohol intake and quitting smoking are also crucial. Think of it like giving your body a well-deserved break from harmful substances. Now, lifestyle changes are important but sometimes they may not be enough. That's where medications come in. There are multiple classes of drugs available, each working in a different way to lower blood pressure. Your healthcare professional will determine the best fit for you, based on your health history and current condition. Finally, regular monitoring and checkups are integral. 
It's like keeping an eye on a sneaky enemy, you need to know what it's up to. Regular checkups help in adjusting treatment plans if required, and also in catching any potential complications early. Remember, managing hypertension requires consistent efforts and regular medical attention. It may seem challenging at first but with time, these changes can become a part of your routine, leading you towards a healthier and happier life. Hypertension, the silent killer, isn't as daunting when we understand it. It's a common condition resulting from factors such as poor diet, lack of physical activity, obesity and stress among others. Yet, it often goes unnoticed due to its silent nature, making regular checkups a critical part of its early detection and management. Remember, hypertension can lead to severe complications such as heart disease or stroke if ignored. It can also be both a cause and a result of other conditions like type 2 diabetes. But it's not all doom and gloom. With lifestyle changes like a healthy diet, regular exercise, weight management, and limiting harmful habits, we can prevent or manage this condition effectively. Treatment options including medications and regular monitoring can also help keep hypertension in check, so it is crucial to stay informed and take proactive steps towards your health. Thank you for watching. Stay informed, stay healthy and remember your health is in your hands. Disclaimer. This video is solely for educational and informational purposes and should not replace professional medical advice. We strongly urge consulting with healthcare professionals for tailored advice and before making any substantial changes to your health or lifestyle. Stay informed, stay healthy. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest health and wellness content. Your health is important to us. Welcome to our health awareness series. Today we're embarking on a journey of discovery into the world of high cholesterol and type 2 diabetes. Two conditions that, while seemingly different, share a deep connection and can significantly impact your life. High cholesterol, a condition that affects millions, is often the silent accomplice to numerous health issues, including heart disease. On the other hand, type 2 diabetes, a condition that can drastically alter your day-to-day -day life is often linked to high cholesterol. But fear not, knowledge is power. By understanding these conditions, their causes and their potential impact, we equip ourselves with the tools to manage, mitigate, and maybe even prevent them. So, whether you're here out of curiosity, concern for a loved one, or to better understand your own health, you're in the right place. Understanding high cholesterol and type 2 diabetes is the first step towards a healthier future. Cholesterol is a fatty substance in our blood, a key player in the ongoing drama of our body's functions. Picture it as a backstage crew member, essential but unseen, performing crucial tasks behind the scenes of our day-to-day -day life. It helps build healthy cells, insulate nerves, and produce certain hormones. But when cholesterol decides to steal the limelight, things can get dicey. High levels of cholesterol can lead to a buildup in your arteries, a condition often referred to as atherosclerosis. This can put you on a fast track to heart diseases and stroke. High cholesterol can be a silent actor, often showing no symptoms until significant damage has been done. Various factors contribute to these high levels, from the food we eat, our body weight, to the genes we inherit. So let's pull back the curtain and see how lifestyle choices and genetics play a role in cholesterol levels. Diet is a key factor when it comes to managing cholesterol levels. You see, what we eat can greatly influence the amount of cholesterol in our bloodstream. Foods that are high in saturated and trans fats, for example, can send our cholesterol levels soaring. These can include items like fatty cuts of meat, full-fat dairy products, deep-fried foods, and baked goods. However, it's not all doom and gloom. There are healthier alternatives that can help us keep our cholesterol in check. Foods rich in unsaturated fats, such as avocados, nuts, and oily fish, can actually help reduce cholesterol levels. Fruits, vegetables, and whole grains are also excellent choices, as they are high in fiber, a nutrient that helps to lower cholesterol. So, while it may seem daunting, simply switching to a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains can make a big difference. It's a change that can lead to a healthier heart and a healthier you. Obesity increases the risk of high cholesterol. When there's an excess of body fat, it can significantly affect the way your body manages and utilizes cholesterol. This is because obesity often comes hand in hand with increased levels of low-density lipoprotein, or bad cholesterol, 
while simultaneously lowering the levels of high-density lipoprotein, or good cholesterol. This imbalance can create a perfect storm, leading to an escalation in cholesterol levels. But there's good news. By managing weight and embracing a healthier lifestyle, you can help your body rein in these cholesterol levels. A balanced diet filled with lean proteins, whole grains, and an abundance of fruits and vegetables can make a positive impact. Pair this with regular exercise to help shed those extra pounds. Not only does physical activity help with weight loss, but it also boosts your body's levels of good cholesterol. A balanced diet and regular exercise can help manage weight and lower cholesterol levels. Genetics also play a role in determining our cholesterol levels. You see, our genes, those tiny instructions that build who we are, they can carry a bit of a double-edged sword. While they gift us our unique characteristics and traits, they can also pass on certain health conditions, including familial hypercholesterolemia, a genetic disorder that can cause high cholesterol levels from a young age. Even with a healthy lifestyle, individuals with this condition may find themselves battling high cholesterol due to their genetic makeup. It's like running a race with a little extra weight on your shoulders. But don't let this dishearten you. By understanding our genetic predispositions, we can take proactive steps towards managing our health. Regular checkups and screenings are important tools in our health management arsenal. They become even more crucial if you have a family history of high cholesterol. Remember, knowledge is power, and in this case, it could be the power to save your life. If not managed, High cholesterol can lead to heart disease, stroke, and other serious conditions. It's like a ticking time bomb, silently wreaking havoc on your body. When cholesterol levels rise, it builds up in the walls of your arteries, narrowing them and reducing blood flow. This condition, known as atherosclerosis, can lead to coronary artery disease, where your heart muscle doesn't get enough blood causing chest pain and potentially a heart attack. High cholesterol also increases the risk of peripheral artery disease, affecting the arteries in your legs. Reduced blood flow can result in pain and numbness, and in severe cases, infection and even gangrene. Another complication is stroke, which occurs when a blood clot blocks blood flow to part of your brain. Without blood, brain cells die, resulting in potential long-term disability or even death. Remember, it's a silent threat, often with no symptoms until serious damage is done. Now let's explore how high cholesterol is linked to type 2 diabetes. These two conditions often walk hand in hand, forming a complex health puzzle. High cholesterol can contribute to insulin resistance, a key player in type 2 diabetes. Moreover, the same lifestyle factors that elevate cholesterol levels, such as a poor diet and lack of exercise, can also trigger type 2 diabetes. This brings us to our next topic, type 2 diabetes, another condition deeply influenced by lifestyle and genetics. Type 2 diabetes occurs when your body doesn't use insulin properly, leading to high blood sugar levels. This condition is a global health concern, affecting millions of people. It's not just about sugar, though. When we talk about type 2 diabetes, we're really talking about how your body metabolizes glucose, the fuel that runs every cell in your body. Now, insulin is the key player here. It's a hormone produced by your pancreas, and its job is to ferry glucose from your bloodstream into your cells. But in type 2 diabetes, this system goes awry. Your cells start resisting insulin, and in response, your pancreas produces even more. Over time, though, your pancreas can't keep up and your blood glucose levels rise, setting the stage for type 2 diabetes. The causes? Well, they're many and varied, including obesity, a sedentary lifestyle, and yes, genetics, too. Let's delve into its causes and why prevention is key. Poor diet, obesity, and family history are major risk factors for developing type 2 diabetes. Just as with high cholesterol, the choices you make each day significantly impact your risk. Let's delve a bit deeper into these factors. A diet high in sugar and unhealthy fats can lead to weight gain and insulin resistance. Two pivotal players in the onset of type 2 diabetes. Obesity, particularly excess fat around the abdomen, has been linked to this condition due to its role in promoting insulin resistance. On the other hand, genetics also comes into play. A family history of type 2 diabetes can increase your chances of developing the condition. But it's important to note that genetics alone doesn't determine your fate. The good news? Lifestyle changes can make a real difference. Incorporating regular physical activity, adopting a balanced diet, and maintaining a healthy weight can all work in your favor. Remember, 
making healthier choices can reduce your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Ignoring diabetes can lead to heart disease, kidney failure, and even blindness. This stark reality underscores the seriousness of type 2 diabetes. It's not just about managing sugar levels, it's about preventing a cascade of health problems that can drastically affect your quality of life. The complications of type 2 diabetes are many and varied. Heart disease and strokes are among the most serious, often due to the damage high blood sugar levels can inflict on your blood vessels. Kidney disease is another potential complication, as the kidneys work over time to filter out the excess glucose in your blood, eventually leading to kidney failure in severe cases. Your eyes are not immune either. High blood sugar levels can damage the tiny blood vessels in your eyes, leading to a condition known as diabetic retinopathy, which can result in blindness if left untreated. Nerve damage, particularly in the feet, can also occur, leading to serious infections and sometimes amputation. But it's not all doom and gloom. These complications can be prevented or at least managed with early detection and the right approach. A balanced diet, regular exercise, and maintaining a healthy weight are key. Regular checkups and monitoring of your blood sugar levels can help catch any issues early. And when lifestyle changes aren't enough, medication can play a crucial role in managing your diabetes. But, with early detection, diet, exercise, and medical management, these risks can be significantly reduced. Remember you have the power to take control of your health, 